Sigo hore pse kuklitsa mu, tsifte teli turkiko. O panina nina nai nina nai nai. O panina nina nai nina nai nai. O panina nina nai nina nai nai. Yeah. What is that? What is that song? I don't know it's just a Greek song. Is it like a Greek wedding song? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. What's, yeah. <laughs> what does it mean? What does it say? Like, what are you talking just about? For the girls to get up and sing and dance. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, so it always comes up at, at every wedding, kind of thing. Is that the idea? Um. Yeah, pretty much. But you, you, you kind of yeah. rolled it off the tongue really quickly. It wasn't that difficult to remember. No, it wasn't. It. Not it when you're up. Greek and you hear it 500 million times. What part of Greek are you? Is your family from Greece? My father is. Um, he's from Ptolemaida. Where's that? It's north part. I'm not great with my geography. Okay, no, no. I'm just curious. And my mom's from Florina, out of Mansko. So my mom's Macedonian, but my dad's Greek. Yeah. The old world. The old world. The old world, man. Yeah. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you man, for having thank us. You. Full, thank you. full HVAC house. Yeah. Yep. Everyone loves HVAC? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's let's just go let's go through the table one by one. Obviously, we're gonna have a, like a start HVAC show here. Tyler's the one that organized it. I saw him last at CMPX. You guys were there. It was really interesting. And then I suggested to him, I was going like, bring the boys in, man. Let's just shoot the shit about HVAC and we'll talk about HVAC and start because of what he's built. Because I'm respectful of what he's built, right? Because he's done really a good job and he's got a solid crew. How many employees now he's got going on? How many people there? They were not know. I think about thirteen. 13. Yeah, How many yeah, vans? 30. I know that the parking lot right now looks like it's a stock parking lot, man. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. What, total six? Was, was, there's four, four install te- uh, trucks. Yeah, and three yeah, service. And three, three service, service trucks. trucks. Yeah, yeah. And busy, busy, busy. And the truck <laughs> and Dallas yeah. truck. Yeah, and then there's two yeah. pickups. Yeah, for zipping around the city. StotHVACSystems.ca at Stott underscore HVAC underscore systems and reach them out at, well, you guys are going to share your individual emails, right? But everybody, like, uh, I'm assuming there's an Not. office or an info, StotHVACSystems.ca email, yep. right? But yeah. you guys will share it. So one by one, introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm JR. What's your email? Oh, my email is yeah. JR at StotHVACSystems.ca. But then you also do, like, sub for them as well, too. Yes, I do. You want to share that out or what? Sure, yeah. Um... My work email is supremeairflowhc at gmail.com. One man shop still? Um, or are you got an assistant? Pretty much. Sometimes I do have an assistant, but okay. I work directly with, like, mostly with. Um, with you boys. Yeah. Stock guys, yep. yeah. Got it. Stop. And then Jay? I'm Jay. You the newest? No, not the newest. Am I? No. Yeah. Are no, you newer you than George? Yeah. Not newer no, in the yeah, industry, a lot, but newer a lot. than. <coughs> yeah, a lot newer. A lot. Okay, yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. Jay Singh. Okay. Uh, Jason at starthvac.com. And you handle? The Technically, what do you what do you do there? An I'm an uh, installer. Installer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then George? George at starthvacsystems.ca. Come on, George. You got to give up the surname. Come on. <laughs> it's one of the shortest Greek surnames I know. Nastas. Is you know what I mean? You barely used even a quarter of the alphabet, man. Exactly. I'm not being I racist. saved letters for others. <laughs> I'm a senior technician. Senior technician. So you're problem solver. Yes. Because there's always problems. Or I fix everybody's F-ups. Okay. Oh. Take care of F-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, you've had a movie, like you ranked up, no, or ranked down. What is uh, it? Ranked <laughs> sideways? Ranked, I don't know how you ranked. I think I ranked up sideways. No, ranked sideways. I can't even say No, that. you ranked up. No, it's you sideways. You used to install, and now you're doing business side of things it's operations i'm looking over projects and helping on the technical side designing things crazy creative wiring things on the whiteboard yeah i'm always playing with ideas you know trying to get a little uh, innovative with our systems and then what's your email uh, it's benny at start hvac systems okay um all right what do we want to begin here how long you guys been in hvac everybody what's the combined age of experience here Oh jeez! What are we 13. talking about here? Probably like sixty nice. years or so. How many years, George? You've been in the biz. Twenty years. Twenty, 20 years. Strictly HVAC. Yep. Right out of the gate, went right into HVAC. Well, I did automotive before that, so which kind of makes sense from an automotive background. And then Ben, uh, thirteen, thirteen years. How young are you? Are you the youngest here? No. Yeah, I am actually. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's the thirty. Young. Yeah. Are you, I'm thirty. You are not younger than him. No. No. 
No way. Yeah, these <coughs> guys don't age. We age fast. We yeah. show our age. No, but we hit a wall, <laughs> and then he get so age back <laughs> ninjas don't age. <laughs> we looked young for a little bit, and then we hit a wall. Age back. <laughs> no, I, I I've been told by Asian guys that were telling me that you guys are young all your lives until a certain point, yep. and then you turn into Yoda. And then ring you know what I mean? <laughs> are show up. Yeah. It almost <laughs> happens overnight. It yeah. just happens like That's you wake it. up and all of a sudden you're older, but you guys yeah. keep your youth. We're like you guys over. are young. So okay, so 13, 20, 24. Four? Yeah. And you were doing a bunch of stuff before, right? I was a mechanical engineer. Oh, okay. I worked in the industry, automotive industry, for a couple of years before coming here. Then came here as a skilled worker, uh, got immigration. And when I came here, they basically goes, go screw yourself. We don't like your education. <laughs> and, uh, I still hate that, you know. That, that about uh, I'm sorry, man. But yeah, I that's that. okay. It, like you guys, okay. immigrants coming in here have the skill set to actually come in here and contribute. So I hate the fact that it's being dismissed, man. Yeah, that's the problem because, okay, if you come with any other visa, it's great. But if they call you as a skilled worker, they give you they give you status here. Like, hey, come to Canada. We need skilled people. We need them. Exactly. And when we come here, they're like everybody who's given jobs to us. They're like, oh, we don't like your education. Even though you transfer it, they still don't like it. And there's no test. There should be a equivalency test. If you pass it, great. You should be considered. You can't even challenge it. In, like I thought. No, you can't challenge. You have to go back to school to See, do some courses. And, really and nice. I tried. And when you sit in the class with kids and the teacher teaching you and you're like, this is nonsense. And then you're like, I'm not going to waste my time. And a lot of us came at the point where we don't have time to go to school. Yeah, of course. You have all the responsibility of to course. start your life from zero. Yeah, yeah. And I did it a few times. Because I left India all by myself. Two of us, two friends came here. Knows nobody. How far back we talking? Uh, 2010, 10, 11. Okay. Came here, me and my friend. Then did random jobs. Tried to find. Because when we came here, we were under the perception that, oh, we're going to go there. We're going <laughs> to get some good engineering, high paid jobs. Life set. And it hit Where me. did you get that perception? From it's it's a made perception everywhere you go. Now it's it's now it's gone. Because now enough people came here. Yeah. Now they because before that nobody tells truth when they go back home. Nobody tells that I am a laborer in Canada. Nobody. Nobody wants to say it. Whether it's US, Australia, any any first world country. People live there, they, they don't tell. But now with social media, with actual people like us who came here uh, for sake of better jobs, mm -hmm. even though we have education, better jobs when we were there. And then we came and like, no, this is all lie. You can't even get a decent job here. There's a lot of gatekeeping just in this oh, country. Oh, a huge amount. We know that. I mean, we don't, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but it's just a right. fact. Because a lot of my classmates... My schoolmates, engineering schoolmates, they are down in states running shows. Like some of them are VPs now. Yeah. Like one dude in uh, Japan, he's VP of a company. A few guys out uh, in uh, Detroit, they're running the uh, Chevy, Ford, GM, all these companies. But they just, all started just, as laborers, no? No, 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 no. They went to states. They went to right country. Oh, so then they let them in. It's just here. A lot of people who wow. get education here, they move to states because over here, good luck. There's gatekeeping. Oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this in order to get this. But down there, hey, you have the skill set. Here's the money. Yep. Show us. Because that's how nations are built. This is how these. Why can't we just use the model that it used to be? Mm -hmm. Yep. Way back when, forties, fifties, we're even in the turn exactly. of the century, right? Yeah. Bring in your workers, bring in people that yeah. want to contribute, and then build a nation. Yeah, and then then everybody complains because right now we're living in a world where everybody likes to complain, but nobody likes to do stuff. I like Russell Peters saying right. that just because it's your problem doesn't mean it has to be the world's problem. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good mm -hmm. one. Exactly. It's simple. Uh, you're hogging right. the mic right now, but <laughs> 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 what part of India are you from? Uh, north. North part? I come from uh, a city called Amritsar. Okay. And this is the border city. I grew up uh, on the border of India and Pakistan. Okay. A dangerous part of the world. Conflict on both sides? Both sides. That's why. I, my school got evacuated a couple times because wow. the army took over. Okay. They, they made a Which base. Which army took over? The Pakistan? Indian army. Oh, In no, no, I mean, they made a base because there was a tension on the border. Since I was so close to the border, yeah, they they told us go home, and that school was base of army, just in case things get uh, uh, escalated. Wow. Yeah. And this is like today's time. 
No, no, this is like back, 10, 15 back years. The last century when I was oh, okay. I was grade what? Grade eight or nine. That's when happened. Now things are a little modern. Now they won't do that. Now it's all over the border. My my friends used to make fun of me. They're like, whether they fire or we fire, you're going to die because you sit right you're on in the, the border. <laughs> yeah, you're in the crosshairs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jer. Yeah. What's your story? <clears throat> my story? Yeah, no. What do you do? You're a technician, installer, right? Yeah, both. Okay. Pretty much do pretty much everything. That's it? Yeah. Okay, we're done. <laughs> That's Bye, a wrap. Yeah. No, Thank how you, old huh? Supreme now? You started doing Supreme how long ago now? Um, it's recent. Two years. Two years. Two years now. actually this this year. April. Yeah, yeah. I started back in 2022, April. Is being a business owner exactly what it's cracked up to be? Nope. You not guys, not you guys haven't really. tackled that yet, but you have. No, you haven't talked. No, no. I, you're the only one. I owned my business, but a different business. It's a different world, huh? Yeah, and and yeah. I got all these white hairs. Because of that, it's it's tough. Yeah, it's really so I just grow it. George and I just grow it. But well, you got lighter hair, so you don't notice it as much, man. We had the family business in automotive, so I've ran that. It's still stressful. Oh yeah. Everyone thinks that it's easy. Nope. Nope. It ain't it's easy, easy right? Nope. So why do you guys love HVAC? Why HVAC? Other than all the Milwaukee tools, uh, why do you guys love HVAC? Because we're in it uh, too deep, so we have to love it. What do you mean you're uh, in it too deep? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> you're either sucked right. into the dark side. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, pretty side. much. Right? He, he, else he you fell in do. the hole. You either yeah. embrace it or you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He passed like, past the threshold that yeah. he can try <laughs> something back. else. Point of no <laughs> so, so you can't so. Do it, you can't do another <laughs> trade. Well, I don't think so. But you guys like, are already doing electrical. Now, right? You guys are already doing plumbing. You guys are already doing ductwork. You're already some doing... sort of framing too. Yeah, yeah. Some days we're landscapers. Yeah. Right, we're digging it's, it's, it's I'd only have ever seen an HVAC guy with a, a Mason's trowel, though. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> we, that. We've done no. it. Oh, oh, we have. Oh, wait, that's right, because you got to patch holes in exactly. your yeah. and you got to put... Ah, the, so you, old, yeah. the old... Oh, but you guys vents. pull out a putty knife. You guys go <laughs> yeah. pull out a putty <laughs> knife. <laughs> you do not bring out a Mason's trowel. Oh, no, we actually gross. pull out the caulking oh, gun. <laughs> we caulk the <laughs> hole. We caulk the oh, hole. We caulk it. Yeah. You, you, yeah, you you cut the sausage right at the end of yeah. it and it just comes yeah. right out. Yeah. Like it just out. out. Speaking of which, let me do a quick shout out to Transform. I'm wearing his t-shirt today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I always got to give a shout out to. Stock gave me a bunch of swag. He gave me like sunglasses. I don't think I've ever seen any of you guys wear them. Oh, we the blue sunglasses. He gave me hats. He gave me hoodies. He gave me tees. I'll be wearing those over the time, right? So, all right. Well, let's like, you guys age, like you guys handle all kinds of stuff: service and maintenance, and changing the furnace filter, running the furnace, like all this shit. You guys do all this stuff, Everything. right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Everything. Preventive maintenance, custom yep. custom home builds. These guy, <coughs> this guy, tackled the design. Ben tackled the designs. Then we, it's basically we start a house. So that's that's what I love about HVAC, about start, the way we do. Yeah, I was as I told you, Anarchers, five six water heaters a day, and that's it. Same stuff again and again. You, you get how many more, years did you do that for? Just just one, and then I had but one full year of doing five six tanks every a day. day. You wake up, you do tanks every day. Take out the old, disconnect. Yeah. Take out the old, yeah. bring yeah. in the new, new one. Fill it up. That's that's why I'm saying you get go, so good. You learn the tricks how to do things fast enough. Do you guys love doing tanks? Nobody no. does. No. Nobody loves it. No. They suck. <laughs> why? Nobody. It's it's tough. It's just like in that big heavy. Yeah. It's tough. You have to. If you're doing a private sale, it's it's a pain. There's no money. There's, There's no, no money, money in it. No, no. Money in that's it. right. Because yeah. the tanks are expensive to begin with, and then yeah. clients Correct. are, are yeah. haggling you about what the fee is to actually do it, labor wise. Yeah. And they constantly fail. The tanks do. Apparently, tanks in today's are failing. They're probably good for honestly. I've seen them like eight, ten years old. That's so young, man. Yeah, Six, and you're supposed to actually flush them out. How often? Every year is recommended. I make a note of that. Every, every, every year. year every year flush, yeah, because there's the sediment that gets built up. Yep. <clears throat> every couple of years, change the anode. Just drain it. No, yeah. No, yeah. You, yeah, just drain and yeah. flush all the sediment out. So as it's draining, you 
flush. Are you out actually going to see like yes? Oh, you'll see HVAC some... pulp coming out of the bottom of that yep. thing. Yeah, yep. you oh, yeah. will see it, huh? And then yep. the anode tube is supposed to yep. change. What's the anode? Tube? That's the thing that's inside there. Correct. Right. That okay. stops the rust of the the body of the tank. Yeah. So all, when water heats up, chemistry changes. Yes. Instead of reacting with the shell, that bacteria. What's it called? There's a bacteria that forms inside. Well, there. that's that's because of the low water temp. Yeah, that's low water temp yeah. leads to Legionella. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, that's that's when you store your water under one twenty. Yeah, but that's why you yeah. keep the tank hot, and then on top of the tank you got a mixing valve. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, speaking of which, since I got all you guys in here, yay or nay on the mixing valve? Uh, depends. On depends on the homeowner. Because what? Why? Because two 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 parts to this thing. A lot of people doesn't like one twenty coming out of the tap. But if you've got a thermostatic valve when you renovated your bathrooms. Mm-hmm. Why do you need a mixing valve? Sometimes, you, yeah, it, it, it's code. The term, uh, mixing yeah, valve yeah, is yeah, part okay, of the code. Listen, just because it's code, it doesn't yeah. mean that it's right. Correct. That's mm-hmm. true. Not every, so technically your dryer, uh, sorry, your washer and your dishwasher supposed to be tapped before the mixing valve, only where you use the water. Yes. Okay, first of all, dishwasher is supposed to get to a certain temperature to wash your dishes. Have we all not worked as busboys in some sort of hospitality suite when we were teenagers? True. And how yeah. we burned our arms from opening up the, the dishwasher yeah, and right. pulling out the Super tray? Hot. Yep. Like, I'm just, everybody's recollecting now, right? Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. like that temperature has to be at a certain point. Yeah. So it has to be hot, right? To yes. do its exactly. job. So but when you send it to 120, it might have to turn its internal coil on. But talk about coil. wasting energy now because you're heating the temperature so high and then you're reducing that temperature to make it come out. Yep. And right. so now you're wasting money, right? And, and we're eventually going to get into efficiency crap and all this other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So you guys are, okay, if it's not code, is it yay or nay? Because me, it's nay. If I don't agree name. with if, mixing If valves. your water heater only serves the domestic side, then no mixing well yeah. needed. But if you're us, uh, using a combi water heater, uh, it's whether it's doing some sort of in-floor or fan coil or anything, then you got to need Oh, that's it. different, though. But wouldn't it be better to set up a separate system for that? It, not yeah. everybody can do it. Not only that, too. Like, these mixing valves, they fail. They, they get plugged right. up with the little. This is where inside. I'm going at. So right. we'll go hot water tanks with power vented. George, you know this. I'm not a fan of power vented. Yeah. Why? It's a mortar. Mortar. What happens to a mortar today? It fails. It breaks down. Yeah. Does gravity vented hot water tanks? Do they fail? No. It's a pipe that goes up nope. mm-hmm. to the chimney. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And look at it this way: even if you have a power outage, you could still use your yeah, hot water. Exactly. You could still have hot water where your power vented, whatever is inside, if it's a 40, 50 gallon tank, once yep. it's drained out, you have it's no done. power, you've got no hot water. So, but you, you HVAC designer now? <laughs> you're working your way up to HVAC designer. Basically. You're yeah. brown belt. You're going to go black belt? Brown belt for now, I'd say. And I, <laughs> Not yeah. saying it is a racist thing, okay? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> going back to the- <laughs> no, but you, you're, because Tyler was in the same boat. Like, how many years ago was he? He was like mm-hmm. the same boat. He wasn't an actual official HVAC designer, but yeah, then he yeah. worked his way up, right? Yeah, yeah. He went through the HRAI mm-hmm. trainings. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. I've there's there's a whole him. school. It's oh, it's huge. Yeah. 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 Huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, I, I, and I bring this up because I want homeowners to listen to realize that when you get an HVAC tech or when you get a tradesperson coming yes. into the show, there's knowledge behind what they're expressing. It's yeah. not like I'm here just pulling out of a bag. This is what you need to do. This mm-hmm. is what's going to cost. And no, you guys are calculating things correctly yeah. Yeah. and you're understanding what the serviceability is attached to this and what you need to pay attention to. Like I just made that note about draining your hot water tank yeah. every year. You do that for what purpose? So you can make that life of that appliance last longer. Is that Correct. not true? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. But people just completely ignore it. We'll, we'll, we'll get into HRV filters and ERV filters and all kinds. Of, your, your actual, everyone is so good on EcoB and uh, the furnace filter. Oh, look, I just got a notification. Uh, yeah. I'm a rock star. I'm an HVAC technician. Yeah. No, you're not. You are not even anything. <laughs> yeah. like, like you're a homeowner that just got a notification. That's yeah. all it is, right? <laughs> so I'm just trying to educate people, let them know that there's a lot of skill and okay. knowledge behind you guys showing up yeah. on the job site. HVAC Simple has a that. lot of theory in the background. Huge yeah. amount. A ton of theory, yeah. yeah. A lot. Yeah. A lot of theory. Airflow, heat. Right? Well, that's what George Cooling. taught me on the very first job yeah. that I met him. He's like, path of path of least, least resistance. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You know, because you started learning about elbows and how the air moves and stuff like that. Nobody exactly. really thinks about more that. fittings, yeah. more elbows, less restrict. Re- exactly. Yeah. So you then then, then you get homeowners saying, Well, why is my room that's the furthest one away from the furnace the coldest? Yeah. Yes. Yep. 
Prime oh. example in my house, my HVAC system where my master bedroom is because it's the furthest. I got three registers, no air. You got three registers because the code is telling you you need to have three registers because of the size of windows that are there? Right. So I got two, one on each, under each window. Yeah. And then one in the walk-in closet. I don't know why. It's, it's useless in there. Because there's a the, door. The heat losses of the, the room. And I got one outside wall. So that's why they put one in there. But nevertheless, it's there's no airflow. Do you guys feel that code-wise is under on the return air and over on the supply air? Because supply air is dictated by how much glass coverage, correct? Depends on the R value uh, yeah, of no, your glass. glass. The entire envelope. There's, there's and the building. The entire yeah, envelope. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, but I just find that the air returns are always under you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's in old homes because yes. we, we hardly had heat works fine without these returns. We never had AC because ACs are taken over now as people want more comfort in the house. Yeah, this is what I understood from the market because any old home you go to, they hardly have any returns. Well, on there's the like top one floor. on the main floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. And you might have a high and low Maybe on the second small. floor. Yeah. one location. That's yeah, it. And then one in the basement. Yeah. That's yeah. the return. Because heat will rise, no problem. Heat will reach to your top floor no problem but a lot of people complain about <laughs> well, you got closer oh sorry a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of homes complain so oh, top floor is hot it never never cools down because they never put those returns it's only made to take care of the heating side that's where now when we do all these new homes returns are really crucial you're yep. supposed to put yep. more returns so you pull all that hot air down yeah so makes cold sense. air can reach up but that's what you want to do right yeah yep but it's 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 more than a code. If we are working there, we we see that oh, this is not. You consult like if I notice something, I'll go back to these guys, Ben and Tyler. Like, hey, what do you guys say about it? And then they maybe talk to the designer, engineer, homeowner, the the uh, whosoever taking care of that. And then we'll, I'll, they will throw their knowledge at them. Like, hey, as per our experience. We you need maybe a return here, like a prime example. That's what skylights. I mean. yeah, skylights. Skylights. Right, skylights. Right prime now. example. Yeah. Well, t tunnel skylights. <laughs> yeah. If you got vaulted ceiling skylights, mm -hmm. that's a different story. But that exactly. still applies because of the volume exactly. of space, right? Yeah. So you guys are calculating the space volume, not yeah. just the floor area. A lot of the plans don't have a return air or supply air across uh, the skylight. So because yeah. homes are tighter these days, the moisture. Is, is and that's how you get condensation. I've exactly. seen it. Yeah. So we've been adding uh, return or supply uh, going across a skylight just to prevent water droplets from potentially building up. I know, because right? they'll think that the roof is leaking. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't show on the plans, but it's an extra step we take yeah. whenever, whenever we see a skylight framed out or yeah, if it's we, there. We actually right. just did that with uh, one of our jobs. We yeah, had, yeah. We, we had uh, HRV, like, exhaust, like, you know, facing mm -hmm. that. The sky is sucking. Okay, sucking really? Yeah. yeah. A direct line to a the direct HRV. Direct line from the HRV. Okay. Suck, suck out all the moisture in that area. Yeah, yeah. The ventilate right. under oh, underside yeah. of that. So now, does your HVAC design trump code? No. Okay. Does the HVAC design trump code? Hmm. He can answer that better. I'd say no. I don't know. I'm asking. No, because usually code is a certain standard that a correct. heat supply line has to code, be in every closed room. Code yeah. is minimum that you need to do. Yeah. So I'm just trying to think of like and when design, you do an HVAC design, you guys will come up with a better version of code, yeah. which might entail yeah. more supplies, more returns Yes. Yeah. in different areas sometimes. Yeah. It's very rare, though, that we see plans that don't match or meet code. A yeah. lot of times they're based on code the way they're drawn out <coughs> designed right so especially with uh, custom homes now like yeah the yeah. designers that we work with they're, they're really very, good very yeah. knowledgeable but with that but also see here's the funny thing is that even homeowners and you're building new construction it's done on paper and it's based on calculations yeah. and it's not until you guys hook it all up and you run the system mm -hmm. yeah. that you will discover that the calculations are correct and mm -hmm. everything's going to work perfectly yeah Right, it might need some finessing here and there. Well, you don't know. Like you guys, that's why you put dampers inside of the runs, mm -hmm. so you can tone down certain things if you have to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, based on code, you have to have all these runs. And now I'm noticing you guys are probably going to share this. Is I, 
the like back you open up older homes what it was like four inch runs five inch yes. runs Sometimes but nowadays it's, it's like what it's like eight inch runs or even yeah. just full duct work going on to certain a lot of areas. them are six inch six, six inch now six most of them are six seven inch. Yeah. yeah but to move six inch through a house of traditional framing it's a little tough mm. Yeah. yeah, and depending on the house, sometimes you get into having not only one system but two systems. This podcast is brought to you by Redmond Distributing, a proud family-owned and operated HVAC supplier, serving Ontario for the past 22 years. With warehouses conveniently located in both Mississauga and Ottawa, they specialize in providing premium HVAC and hearth equipment across the region. Redmond Distributing is committed to supporting HVAC businesses with their dedicated customer service, Reliable warranties, free training sessions in their operational facility, inventory management, and free delivery to most locations in southern Ontario. For a partnership with true HVAC equipment specialists, choose Redmond Distributing. Explore more at www.redmonddistributing.com. So what's the cutoff? I was always taught 3,500 square feet is your magic cutoff where you might have to consider a second furnace. Is that not the case? See, or that's, variable? That's, see that's, that's... No? No. no. <clears throat> It, it you want full comfort go with the numbers what do you mean full comfort what well, comfort the means you go you want to freeze certain you, times no i mean full comfort means you're sitting in your living room you like it you move to your study or to your bedroom and like why this room is not hot or cold or yeah. to the up to a certain comfort level that's because somebody said oh but let's go by this because because his father said do this, and then his son told his son do this, and, and this this kind of culture. And none they of are them well, have HVAC experience. They they exactly right. they, no, yeah. they are well trained, but are they well educated as per well Google trained? <laughs> no, I mean it, like a lot of techs. Oh, a father does it. Yep, and oh. he passed down. I know, but they're stuck in the old ways. Yeah. Of exactly, because that, that's, that's where the education. Yeah, yeah. they are well trained. So you guys are constantly going back to school. I see you guys go back yeah. into the classroom. It's not always on the job site. Mm -hmm. You guys are always sitting on the desk and listening, paying attention to a board and yep. taking notes. And you guys are constantly being retrained. Yeah, you have yeah. to. No, we're trying yes. to get away yeah. from yeah. the old thoughts. Yeah, basically. a lot of books. Sorry. No, no. A lot, a lot of books from went from first edition to 1920, 14th edition. Cliff, one of our serious, ser uh, senior service technician, he had a book for uh, refrigeration, very first edition, this big book. Why that book made it to 40th edition and this big? Because education. Yes. People studied, people did R&D on the stuff. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, old way's not working. Let's add more and more and more. That's the problem. A lot of people say, is, okay, this many, uh, this big house, this big furnace. But what's, when you ask them, hey, why we, why you said so? Oh, my father told me, or everybody says that this big house, go with this big furnace. And but but he told you when, like 1990? Exactly. Like, I That's don't the whole point. What kind of house sense. was that? Yeah. What kind of Exactly. <clears throat> what kind of framing was exactly. it? Exactly. What kind of system? insulation? Yeah, insulation, all right? that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That, that thing's. That things make a huge impact. How many windows? What way this house is facing? Where is that house? Up the hill? Down the hill? What's the close to the lake? Away from the lake? A lot of things. Different. See, there's lots of arguments because you get a lot of passive builders who just get on the electric train, right? And obviously, this is an HVAC show, so heat pump's going to come up, and we're going to argue it and whatever, right? But I respect the electric heating train if those walls are like two feet thick for a purpose you know what i'm saying right yeah. and also if you're willing to sacrifice ac so if you somehow design the orientation of the home regarding sun and geographically speaking yep. then you can reduce it and if you're using shingles a certain way if you're using canopies a certain way so you can reduce that we know this from old world europe and even yep. asia all this other stuff they design certain homes a certain way that yep. were cool without any mechanical systems yes yeah, yeah. They worked really yeah. well, right. but it all started with like solid stone walls that retain that coolness. And there were concrete floors that retain that coolness. So you didn't need the AC, right? So when you're doing a passive and you're just using one little electric baseboard heater or something like that, sure, that can actually sustain the entire house. But then you still need to move air and you have mm. to have windows circulating. My problem is clients nowadays don't even open up the window when it's seasons change from winter to spring. Right. Yep. They leave it open. Shoulder seasons. Yeah. 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 Shoulder seasons. Like, like, as soon as it gets warm, open it up, 
all your windows yeah. and let your yeah. house breathe yeah. during the ideal moments of the day that is warm. Obviously, like we just had frost this morning. Yeah. Right. Like we, I was surprised to see frost on it. I was like, oh, look, the shingles are not brown. They're white. It's like, They're it white. like it's April. I don't understand. But you should be able to open it up. Even like I think it was a month ago, I cracked open my skylight. Just let it open. Let the air move yeah. is what sure you can. want to do. Yeah. So there's lots yeah. of things that homeowners don't realize. They, they only contact you guys when it fails. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Which is already too late, no? Exactly. And that's where we're going to get into yeah, service, exactly. but that's what you primarily handle, right? Yeah, so you service. go in there, and are you surprised to see all these things failing, or are you just expecting these things to fail? Because <laughs> homeowners are not educated, or homeowners don't care. I w- well, I think they're not educated. the The problem is is when you try to explain to the homeowners about preventative oh, maintenance right and be yeah. proactive. Yeah. Uh, they, they they look at it as well. I feel they look at it as okay. He's trying to sell me something that I don't exactly. need. Exactly. And then they the use case. correct. And then they use the philosophy of well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, hey, if we could be proactive and we could come do our maintenance, investigate, and if we see something that's you know maybe there's a leak somewhere within the furnace or a potential part that could be failing or a noise in the venter motor, we could bring it to their attention as hey. This is the situation. It's not too, too concerning now, but you may want to look into it, either getting it replaced or um, replacing the furnace, depending on the age, you know, because when it becomes minus 20, that is when the furnace is going to be working hard. You're going to stress. And then when it fails, you're going to be calling, crying. Without a gas stove. Without trying to get somebody to come out so quick to fix it. So, but majority of homeowners don't really pay attention to that until it's a problem until when it happens. Problem. Until it's a problem. And then the best part is is when you show up and they tell you, you know, I've been hearing this noise for quite some time. <laughs> and it's like, hmm, okay. So why did you call when the noise was happening and then we could have been here before? I'm going to guess they're thinking, ah, it'll go away on its own. <laughs> yeah. They think what That's is ductwork expanding and contracting <laughs> inside the wall cavities? Is that what they think But other is? than that, most of our clients are, are pretty good. We got them on the maintenance program. Yeah, you guys are educating them and letting right. them know, and right? And where they say to us, you know what, George, um, I want the office to schedule me in for the fall schedule me in for the spring so this way we do the cooling and the heating yeah so then we just send them out an email as a reminder hey these are our dates what's good for you what's the uh misconception going on with heat pumps these days guys i know that last time tyler was on the show here we did a round table with other hvac guys as well too and it was it was the disconnect between what our government was saying regarding rebates to what they were offering to homeowners and to the information that homeowners were getting did not jive with what you guys as technicians knew about heat pumps. Not sure about that one, but I know the big misconception is heat pumps being able to go year round. That's right? bullshit. Yeah, it, you can't. It, no. it's, we're not there yeah. yet. No. You'll never be there. No. No, you, you can't heat your house with a heat pump when it's minus 30 outside. Yeah. It's just, you just Canada just does. We didn't have it this winter, but Canada yeah. doesn't go that warm. It's, it doesn't. It goes further. Yeah. Some parts in out west is even further. Yeah. Extremely cold. Yeah. Correct. Right? So it's like you can't sustain a home on a heat pump. There's alone. a cutoff, yeah. There's so you have to basically add a forced air system. Correct. Or one a source any, of any any other source. Source. Some type any of other emergency sources. backup. Yeah, it's have to stage fish. one is good. It's great for shoulder seasons. Um, that actually, it was great for this winter. Yes. <laughs> this so winter, it would, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it made it, sense, yeah. but yeah. they're more expensive. Winter, and right. now, is it true that all heat pumps are all going to be converted like the AC units now? There's no longer going to be an AC, just a, a standalone AC unit. They're all going to be heat pumps. Never now. heard no, of not, that. No, I don't think no, so yet. Yeah. No, um, no I haven't heard anything. anything you mean like all that. the AC is going to turn into the heat pumps? Correct. Oh, no. I don't think we're there yet. Don't nah, think I so I think what Manny's no, trying no. to say is, in other words, I'm not you're not going to be buying just a cooling system only, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be well. It's going to be a the, dual system. These mm. are the systems now. It's it does heat and cool, but it's. But uh, what's the I, point of that? It doesn't make sense. But here's the thing: my house was built in 1985. Okay. In typical Osh- suburban. In Oshawa, typical suburban. Yep. It had electric furnace. The whole neighborhood has electrical furnaces. Now, the whole neighborhood has gas furnaces because nobody liked the electrical furnaces. 
Why didn't they like the electrical? Exactly. That's my, that's my question. Why? And now we are pushing people back what to electrical. What did you say? 85? 85. You know why? Look at history and look at the electrical rates in the 90s. Yeah. Yep. Mm. That's what I was going to say. Look at that. It'll be really high. Eh? It jumped. It, it are really high. high. So this is my concern about what's going on with heat pumps is that get them now, guys. Get them while they're hot because mm. electrical hydro rates are perfectly fine right now. <clears throat> but give us another decade. Where are the electrical rates going to be? Back mm. up. Back up. It's going to be a matter of time before way they say, hey, what's going on? Yes, Our rates to are gas. too low. <laughs> yeah. No, way We're going to bump up that. the rates. Because a lot of fossil fuel we buy, doesn't matter, natural gas, regular gas, diesel, whatever. We paid a lot of taxes on that. That funds our infrastructure. If we phase out that thing, where do you think that money is going to come from? That's uh, exactly. I, I can say a few out. things about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not like I don't understand how we have such a huge nation with like, I would say, a belly of natural resources that we have access to that we could be very extremely efficient homes wise. Like, I'm sorry, natural gas is still efficient, in my opinion. Big time. Right. It's like I think it's the most it efficient is. way of doing things. And like, why do you want to get rid of gas fireplaces? I mean, I still I'm a fan. I know that you're not allowed to do wood burning homes anymore. New construction wise. Yeah. Wood burners completely gone now. Yeah. It's insurance such a purposes. Shame, right? they, well, they, and, uh, stupidity purposes. People don't realize, you know, like you don't start a fire, open flame and then bye. Let's go to the mall. Yeah. Like, it doesn't work that way. Right. <laughs> like, you have to let's still go to pay. <laughs> like yeah. the, the pioneers when they got started. Oh, honey, I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to go out and just like pet the goats. No, yeah. like we're going to pay attention to this fire because it's warming the whole house and cooking our food. So it's, it's, like, I don't know. I don't like where the train's going on all this shit. It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Like you guys are the professionals that are on the job site, understanding the tools that we need to make the homes proper. Mm hmm. Why do I want to listen to suits that have never been on a job site with the brand new white, pristine, clean hard hat telling us what we should do? Is, isn't it everywhere? It's exactly that. Right. People, yeah. people who doesn't know nothing about the trades. So it doesn't matter what trade it is. Yeah. Yeah. Pencil pushers. Right. Yeah. They, they pick up a pen and tell you, OK, you're going to do this. Yeah. And then later he goes, oh, by screwing after screwing all the people, they go, oh, it didn't work. And let's go back to this. Or it's and a this big happened. Oh, moment. Right? This happened. I mean, multiple okay, years. look at it like this: If you guys are running a business that way, how yeah. long would you survive as a business owner? It's going to catch up. Yeah. Clients will talk. People yeah. will yep. talk. They won't hire you again. Yep. All this other shit. Yeah. Like, I don't want to go down that train, but I do want to ask <laughs> yeah. you guys: Is it blasphemy to take your Milwaukee tools to install a Bosch furnace? <laughs> I'm not parting with my Milwaukee. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm just saying. Red, right? It's all about red. Knowing, knowing you that you're a Bosch guy. Yeah, no, yeah. no, listen. Is the oh. Bosch furnace good? Very good. The, yeah. the, I think, I think the heat pump, heat pump side of things, I think it's the best in the market right now. The Bosch ones? Bosch. Really? Yeah. The, why, do they, are, why, why are they so good? I don't know. It's just performance-wise and the way it's, it's like the installation yeah. side of it is very easy. Like if you compare it to like, Carrier has been you know, producing furnace and ACs longer than Bosch, but how come? But they, they haven't been innovating them. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So Bosch came in and like you know, like these guys are not doing these things. Why, they are you know? innovating them exactly. Yeah. Right. The so build, build so quality of Bosch. But I'd, I'd like to just see one post from you guys where you guys are using your Milwaukee tools, installing a Bosch yeah. furnace. That's all. I do have a we Bosch. We might have some. Um, yeah. We might have some pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we might have some pictures. <laughs> that's all it's good for. That's all it's good for. <laughs> and I got it for cheap, so that's why I got I it. I made a bunch of jokes from CMPX there. I was like, why was DeWalt there? That made no sense to have DeWalt there. Did you guys walk by DeWalt? <laughs> no. They were trying to push the press. They have their press adapter. Yeah, right? they came. Yeah. They came out with one. Yeah, uh, they're, um, they're catching up with Milwaukee. Are you guys yeah. buying your DeWalt press? Is like, is no. that going to be happening anytime soon? No. No. Why not? I wonder why. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm just doing my fans. own internal TCL uh, <laughs> survey here. <laughs> DeWalt, give it up, man. Like, stick with the miter. Stick with the SDS. Stick with whatever. Like, the hand, like cordless nailers. Stick with all that shit. Yeah. Stick with it. Stick with the annoying, you know, multi-tool of yours. The loudest one in the market. <laughs> stick with that. I don't care. <laughs> That's it. But do not come in to tread the waters of the pro-press land uh -huh. that are owned by Milwaukee. I'm sorry. Milwaukee or Rigid? Yeah. Both. Both. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Same. Presence in there, same yeah. company. Same company. Yeah, same yeah. 
But I mean, that's I just I found it funny. I totally found it hilarious that yeah. they were trying to get into. And then you had the influencers talking about, oh, look, this is amazing. I'm going to try it. You're like, you're never going to give up bread for this yellow. Yeah. yeah. Never. That's it. No. Never. No. What makes a great team, guys? Culture. Because I know that Stott, Tyler, was all about the team. It's almost like he was building a sports team. You know what I mean? Almost. No? Yeah. Very yeah. similar. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. It's like watching each other's back. Yeah, instead yeah. Of talk on the bench, off the talk. bench, exactly. in the fu- you exactly. know, in the the, yeah. the locker field, room. Yeah, field, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. that, that was so. It was culture. It's culture. It's yeah. it's it's multicultural. <laughs> multicultural. <laughs> yeah, that's that's important too. This George. is Canada. <laughs> everybody gets yeah. along with everybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. that's no <laughs> problem. It's like yeah. fine, and yeah. the food's all great. That's what I love about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, why do you want to, I don't know, mac and cheese? Like, I don't care that, man. But you got to let the white people come in eventually, right? Yeah. <laughs> Share their mac and cheese. But <laughs> culture, right? Culture yeah. is huge. So yeah. you guys understand where the company is going and where the company came from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like, that's been expressed to you, right? When you guys come on board, that's expressed. Yeah. And you guys see yeah. the value in that, and right? And you see it very soon, too, you know, for somebody new coming into the company, right? Like, Jay, you came on. And you saw we all spoke with each other, you know, with respect and we were clear, right? We respected each other. We helped each other. Like, that's huge. It's huge. What if yeah. one guy wants to wear white? He's not going to survive. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm a rebel. <laughs> Yeah, Do you know he's wearing he white. He has he's to be a sub. From the streets, he has, yeah. <laughs> I'm from the streets. Clean white I'm from the streets. He's always tell me, yeah, yeah, I'm from the streets, man. I'm from the streets. Yeah, I'm never getting married. I'm from the streets, man. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah. It just for the record, it wasn't me that came up with HVAC Ninjas. It was Barry Hopkins, the uh, Irish electrician. Oh no way! Oh, when he oh. saw when he saw you guys dressed in black. And he was looking at them. He came up to me and he just said, "Man, they look like HVAC ninjas. Yeah. <laughs> They're running around all over the Is place." Is he back? No, he's in Ireland. He's still oh, yeah. Picked up and moved, and he's doing that. He's doing he, well. He's, he's not doing well there. there. Yeah, he's thought, not coming yeah. back. Yeah, he left there just before the pandemic. He left and oh. went there and raised his family there. And that's well, good. Yeah. Kind of a smart move. That's good. Like, it is. Irish it is. is a beautiful place. If you guys have never been, you guys should go. It's, it's on my list. Beautiful place, man. Yeah. So friendly. Just prepare to drink a lot. Yeah. 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 Not saying that they're big drinkers. I'm just prepared to drink a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like father-in-law, More relaxed atmosphere. Well, as soon as I get off the plane, he picks me up. It's like, bar. <laughs> bar, <laughs> bar, a, bar, 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 bar. It's yeah. like midnight. Hey, we're going to get food. We're going to get food. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm getting tired here, man. Yeah. Sleep. <laughs> Enough pints of Guinness. Like, Guinness yeah. is amazing, but that's Great. bar, 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 right? Yeah. No, good guy. Solid guy. But he's the one that first brought it up, right? So it was kind oh, of funny. Really? But what, do you, yeah. what don't you guys like about HVAC? What don't we like about HVAC? Well, you were saying what? taking out the old tanks. No, that's not. That's about work. That's a part of the work. That's if, part of if, the work. If I cannot advance myself, if I can't not pull myself out of that water heater industry, then I can't hate it. If I'm only if I'm only capable of doing water heaters, say you give me a chance to learn something else, and I suck at it, and I'll go back to do water heaters. I I have no right to hate it. When you got onto that and you were doing just the water heaters, were they interested in seeing if you had the potential to learn anything else? Oh, that's a uh, dangerous sure question. you want to talk about that? No, no, I'm just saying it. <laughs> I, I almost feel like it's like... Because there's, there's a racial part to that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that happened. And then my manager, great man, great guy, he told me, Jay, it's time for you to leave. He told me that. Because you wanted to learn more. Yeah. I, I got in. I got in. I did my co-op with the company. I worked there. He hired me. And then he said he lost about 50 rooftops because of some accident happened. And then he's like, listen, boy, I don't have work for you. You got to find something else. And Anarchare was hiring back then. So oh, I, okay. I, I applied, went in there. No experience. No prior experience of doing water heater. I did in my co-op. I did one water heater. I had no idea how to do water heater. And then they throw three days at me to get l- trained, learn whatever we do. Three there. days. Three days. And great like man. Like from scratch to from finish? From scratch to finish. But How was I'm, the instructor? Huh? How was the instructor? Really good. Okay. Really good. The guy was really good. Okay. And, and I have a habit of, if I see something, I don't hold back, stand back. I was like, okay, let me do it. 
You'll if, ask a question. You'll right. Bring it if up. I screw up, you tell me I screwed up rather than I'm keep looking at it like, oh, okay, I'm going to look at it and learn. No, 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 no. You do it. You screw up. You learn. Right. So I, I picked it up. I, I mean, it took me a while, maybe a month or two to get up to the speed because people were there doing water heater from 17 years. My my instructor, I go ballistic, 17 years. He, he left after 17 I, years. There's another guy did 15 years. So I started doing water heaters. I told my manager, I said, listen, I'm, I, I, I don't see myself doing water heaters my whole life. This is when he was interviewing me. I said, I'll be knocking on your door for more stuff. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because this is, this is just when COVID happened. Mm. And he want people, nobody wants to work back then. So he hired me. And okay, I was what? The only brown guy in the whole team. Did you feel lucky that you were getting these opportunities or were these opportunities lining up because you were speaking up? In in what context? Do you like it just about? I know that a lot of people that try to get into the business, yeah, they kind of navigate the waters and maybe they come across the wrong mentor, the wrong position, and then they're discouraged about staying in the business. But it's almost like you got to find the little pieces of good like in the situation that you're yeah, in. Yeah. So you had a good instructor. Yes. So they were still, and you were, and you were actually confronting them saying, I'm going to be picking your brain. I'm yes. going to be asking you questions. But yeah. if you had a bad instructor, you'd be like, get away from me. I don't want to be answering. You can't you. blame the instructors. No, I'm not blaming no. them. I'm that, not blaming them. No, I'm talking in journal. Okay. If, if you, if you were, if instructor teaching you once, twice, three times, four times, the way I raised by my father, he told me once, twice, Third time, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> we need more of that. Right? I'm sorry yeah. to say, yeah. We and, do need more. And of that. I, I, I had, the, I had it in my brain that once, twice, three, yeah. that's it. How, how after long that, can you're you be dumb. patient with? Yeah. with after that, you're dumb. Yeah. And it goes both ways. You should right? be getting it after the second time. Right. By then, you should have. If okay. if after third time you it's go not in, for you then. right? And then your instructor will say that, yeah, you're an idiot. I would say it personally too. And if I don't get it, say I'm working with this guy, this guy, all of these guys experienced. And if I couldn't get it even three times, if they tell me you're dumb, you're an idiot, I will take it graciously that, oh. What's now you need to learn it. Exactly. Yeah. On your own right. and figure it out. Right. So, so I get in there, I learn, I start doing water heaters and then I realized what the hell. Yeah. Great money at that time, great money. Starting over $30 when you're fresh off school, mm. with six months of uh, co-op experience, amazing money, $31. So I started doing, doing it, and then I slowly asking, hey, and I, my, my, uh, my co-op guy told me, read books, and to understand all the HVAC book, refrigerator book, hydronics book, I had a background of mechanical engineering. So all these books were not a foreign concept. It's, or, not, yeah. it's, it's like waking up, polishing up, because I picked up books after 10 years. Because I, I was in trucking for 10 years. And once I pick up those books, it's it's a matter of reading it. Oh, okay. But do the younger trades that are getting into your trade realize that there's a lot of books behind no. No. the Milwaukee they tools? They They're missing don't. the fact that there's a lot of theory. Education. There's a lot of theory, eh? Behind it. Yeah, it's not as simple as, you know, just doing the You can just definitely just do the work. But do you fully understand, you know, the purpose the, behind the it. purpose? And, you know, if you're doing something a certain way, what comes next? And it's always the what if question. Yeah. Right. You know, you're putting a, a register in the bathroom, for example, and you're putting uh, the supply grill above the bathtub. Like what happens? And, you know, somebody's taking a bath. All of a sudden mm -hmm. cooling comes on. Yeah. You're going to freeze. Yeah. <laughs> right? It just doesn't sense. work. So are you guys seeing more sprinklers in mechanical rooms for legal dwellings? Yes. If, if you're making fireproofing. What? Why? <laughs> it's code. <laughs> yeah. you know, if you've got them. a fire rated wall and you've got a smoke alarm cutoff probe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why do you need a fire sprinkler? Yeah. One fire sprinkler that's water sourced. More protection. And and funny thing talking is for single dwelling yeah. or multi dwelling like for for a second unit dwelling for even basements. Yeah. basement when when basement is a legal dwelling they right. you're supposed to put a sprinkler correct or a sprinkler yeah. in it especially well, in the my, so if you've got a smoke probe even. that if there's smoke in the system it shuts off the furnace shuts. so it shuts off the gas so that means there's no electrical power there's no gas being expelled from it mm. then you've got fire rated wall assembly so it yeah. takes an hour if to it's burn burning through. full flame yeah. on the other side to get onto this side. Mm -hmm. 
Why? <laughs> so I'm still on the sprinkler. The thing is, I think a lot of people put flammable things in the mechanical room. It's and storage. that's another point. So yeah. all this code stuff is great. Yeah. When are we going to see code where you have to have a bare minimum around the entire furnace, manifold, hot water tank of space, and you cannot put any combustible anything in that room? Yeah, when that, is that going to go into that's the code? common sense? You can't well, put it, common sense in code. It's, it's <laughs> well, <laughs> I love that you said clearances that. from combustibles. It's it's yeah. in the code book. It's in the manufacturer's booklet, but the yeah. homeowners don't know that. They don't do that. Yeah. And also lighting is another problem of mine. Like I hate seeing dimly lit <laughs> mechanical rooms and dimly lit <laughs> electrical panels. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm like, they're not supposed to come in with every milwaukee flashlight <laughs> exactly to see? set up you're supposed to turn on a switch oh and you just have, have this yeah you're supposed right. to have yeah. a pen light yeah, so you okay. can see particulars yeah yeah but you should be well illuminated well, it right. should look like you're underneath a spaceship that's just landing in area 51 you know what some i mean it should be that bright. mechanical rooms don't even have lights lights right. yeah. yeah yeah they have one pole chain bulb yeah. pole chain bulb yep yeah this podcast is brought to you by Redmond Distributing, a proud family-owned and operated HVAC supplier, serving Ontario for the past 22 years. With warehouses conveniently located in both Mississauga and Ottawa, they specialize in providing premium HVAC and hearth equipment across the region. Redmond Distributing is committed to supporting HVAC businesses with their dedicated customer service, reliable warranties, free training sessions in their operational facility, inventory management, and free delivery to most locations in Southern Ontario. For a partnership with true HVAC equipment specialists, choose Redmond Distributing. Explore more at www.redmonddistributing.com. And why are you guys putting accent lighting now on the diamond plate and steel? What's going on there, guys? What's going on? It's for the gram. Like. It's, it's for the gram. <laughs> for sure. It is, it is your own marketing. This is the way I, know, I look. This is the way I look at it. Around it? Like, yeah, I, I did it too. Gonna show I did it too at one like, job, and I was like, "This is ridiculous." I, I mean, you might as well. Like, so, if it was me, like, like no different than my sound wave back there, I'd be putting like the accent lighting behind all the gas pipe. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And look, look cool. <laughs> it looks nice. I mean, <laughs> just get some Christmas yeah. lights. <laughs> if if you're getting if you're if you have that much time to spend in the mechanical room, that means you're getting money somewhere else. Time and money. Yeah. No, that's that's peel and stick and put the light behind each yeah. manifold. That's that's yeah. how I see it. <laughs> Running off a nine volt battery. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of which, doesn't okay, those manifolds are beautiful. And everyone's doing them now. You guys are doing them. They're wonderful. You get the sheet of diamond plating, it's wonderful, right? You cut it, use your Milwaukee, cut it, right? Yep. And you put yeah. it on there, and all of a sudden, um the war flex. The yellow against that looks like shit, in my opinion. Hard pipe looks better, no? It does but black yes, hard it does. pipe? Sure, yep. it looks looks much better, but sometimes you don't have choice because of the cost. Uh, cost or and cost the of, area? No, but mean, you're not threading; you're pressing. It's, it depends. Yeah. It it really <laughs> depends on the how the mechanical room is set up. Yeah, not every mechanical room is set up for those nice, beautiful black you know, hard pipe. Hard pipe because sometimes you're going off on a two by four wall. How can you? make those transitions no you can't right it's yeah. hard right so but in new construction though like you you start from scratch yeah but then again that depends on the wall of the mechanical room like right now like i did a house which is like two systems and the mechanical room is like the size of this closet table. yeah mm -hmm. like that's too small yep. yeah but you know what i'm saying like they 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 want to make the mechanical room look nicer bring in like you know boiler Furnaces and they put the jump everything in that one electrical loop. panel that needs to like feet. how do you expect us to make it look nice when we yeah. don't have the space for it? If there's space, you know, the weird sure, thing is that is, just poor yeah. design on the architects. No, uh, they uh, never want to give yeah. us an upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. No. Mechanical, they're like, uh, yeah. well, we'll tuck it. It's, I'd say it's more for the homeowner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I room. want this 6,000 square foot home. Yeah. But here's a 200 square foot mechanical room. Yeah. If that. So you yeah. cram everything in there, and then yeah. when I show up, for a service issue related mm -hmm. and i tell them hmm i gotta get to that equipment but unfortunately where it's installed i can't get to it to service it and then they're like well what do we do we gotta remove this this and this Which and then they realize yep. what the cost is gonna be and now they're probably thinking hmm maybe that 200 square foot room should have been 600 700 square foot room yeah yeah, yeah. so are you guys saying you agree with the sprinkler in the mechanical room <laughs> i would be i i agree 
You would agree with it? Yeah. Just because people use it as a storage and there's flammable things in there. You know, and, great and with the but if you're book. using it solely for the purpose of the furnace and you have fire rated wall and you have the smoke probe, do you still agree with it? If it's just the furnace? Yes. And there's nothing else stored in Correct. there? Correct. Empty. Other than you can see all the concrete. Then it's an extra step. It's just an additional extra. It's just an extra yeah, step. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So More you guys do agree with it? More safety. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's as, long, what's a, as long as everything yeah. falls into... What's a water-sourced sprinkler head cost these days? Oh, I would not of us know. deal with that. But you're stuff. plumbers. No, we're not. Oh, no. We're HVAC. <laughs> not, not, <today. laughs> not today. Not today. We're just yeah, plumbers, today. electricians, your duct, off, sheet off metal, camera, carpenters, gas, like carpenters, carpenters, carpenters. You yeah. know, you guys are everybody. Part yeah. plumbers. <laughs> Automotive. Automotive. Oh, yeah. Same mechanisms. We're drywall in the or some days, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are you guys getting a lot of clients doing boilers? New construction boilers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You getting more? You seeing more of it? They like yeah. the in floor. They love it. And when Comfort. you get to an air in floor, people start saying, okay, like, let's have two less penetrations going out the house. Let's have an air handler, with a hydronic coil, and it just goes on from there. But then you yeah. still need a furnace though for the AC because you're not going to do... No, the air well, handler will the have the ductwork. Yeah. The air handler will yeah. do... Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we'll just put it's the ductwork. AC coil inside the ductwork. So the air handler, you're putting it where? In the attic? Depends. It's mostly in the basement. Basement? In place of a furnace, you would put an air handler with, an, with a hydronic coil and... A lot more people doing the um, hydronics outside for the driveways and the walkways and stuff like that. You've seen a lot Snow more mountains. of that. More and more, yeah. yeah. If yeah. you got money, then why not? Mm -hmm. people yeah, people, yeah. Talk about efficiency there, eh? Yeah, no kidding. Like how efficient? It doesn't matter how. Like it's That's not efficient, right? There's, there's, there's pump no all that heat into yeah. the open air. There's yeah. no efficiency involved in that. Yeah. I've never had done it. I've never had the opportunity to do it for a client. Like when it's working, are the stones like warm to touch? No, no, all it no. has to never do gets is that warm, no. right? It's always it's just, just above it's just, it's zero, just above, above yeah. freezing above point. Freezing yeah, so you could be at two, three degrees Celsius. Yeah. But if you get accumulation of snow, like you get a downpour of snow, it will eventually accumulate on that stone, right? It's depends it, how fast no? really. it's going. No. Depends how fast. So you think it won't. It's the theory is to have the right? stone it, melt it, yeah. before it touches the stone. Yeah, yeah. Because your slab get preheated. It's yeah. not that it detects snow and then, okay, let's see. No, the slab's preheated. So anything that's touching that slab, snow freezes at zero. That slab is above zero. So when that touches and the, the glycol running continue, continually heating up that slab. So technically speaking, OBC legal zoning-wise, you're not allowed to do the boulevards, right? No. 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 But homeowners do the boulevards. Can't say that. <laughs> no comment. And homeowners probably do the sidewalks too. No we don't know about You don't that. do the sidewalks. We, <laughs> I've seen where you go underneath the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> but then you got to let them down. know if city ever comes to break up the sidewalk. Yeah. It's yeah. not their responsibility if no. they start yeah. So if stuff that. starts leaking out, yeah, your so glycol. Yeah. Loop to that. <laughs> you get two fights. <laughs> so, <loop>. yeah. <laughs> so that's why you have you, you got to put it uh, in a separate loop. So just in case the city comes in. It doesn't affect the whole system. Yeah. Ah, so that's a good way to do it. Yeah, separate loop on its own. So, like Jr. said, you can isolate it. If they and then at least the rest. So would you do a separate system. loop for the sidewalk and separate loop for the actual boulevard? Yeah. yeah. So you have it three loops be. then. It should be. Yeah. 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 Well, well, we do, don't. Yeah. Just that, in case. Not that we recommend. <laughs> it. We don't do the sidewalk. <laughs> this no. is what we've yeah. heard. <laughs> we we <laughs> channel. Yeah, you can't. It's not allowed. It's not There's yeah. no homeowner that can afford a driveway snow melt that owns a shovel. So they're not going to own a shovel just to shovel <laughs> the sidewalk and boulevard. I'm sorry. Yeah. They're not going to own it, man. Yeah. Well, the they, city they, usually comes in, plows the sidewalk for The you. boulevard <laughs> and not the sidewalk, not necessarily. <laughs> All right, you know where I'm going with it, but it's just like yeah. it seems like it's expensive, right? Yeah, it is. It's really very expensive. expensive. Yeah. It is. Just really setting up the whole system, but also running the system, too. Yeah. yeah. Operating yeah. cost. Idling mode. A lot of people yep. like, oh, you can't. There's a lot of some of people who get it and then they realize, oh, that's going to be money. They're like, oh, can you put it on on-off switch? If I see it's going to snow, I'll turn it on. It's going to be worse. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm talking about. That makes no sense. You have to ramp, like it has to get to a certain exactly. constant, yeah. right? Yeah, because right. usually it, it has an outdoor sensor or it's connected to internet that tells the system that, okay, it's going to snow. So it heats up the slab. That's a lot of money there. Yep. Yeah. Just to heat up the slab. But. But some homeowners like, oh, can can you put on off if I I will look into my because they app. realize how expensive it exactly. is to yeah. maintain. Yeah. 
You well, you can disable the idle function. Yeah. So when you look at the manual uh, for the driveway snow melt, it will idle function is typically used for commercial application because oh. of the liability. Okay. Mm -hmm. You do not want somebody slipping and falling, and then there's a lawsuit. So when you do residential application, it'll even tell you that idle mode is for commercial use, but you can enable that feature. Like the problem is it's all up to the homeowner if they want to spend that extra cost of keeping that slab pre-warmed at a certain temperature. So when the, the sensor detects snowfall, then the system will go into full run mode to start heating it up to start melting. Or do you want to have that feature off? And then when the sensor detects, then the boiler comes on and starts heating the pipe. But the problem is you'll get that phone call saying, I don't think it's working. Mm -hmm. But it is. The problem is it takes too long. Yeah, can't keep up. So you always got to go back to... So as soon as you start seeing snow, it yeah. should already be the temp. Correct. So it should already be melting. you go back to your end user, which would be the client, and say, hey, Mr. Homeowner, these are your options. What do you prefer? And you explain it to them. Most of our clients will be like, don't worry about the money aspect. I basically want the snow pretty much to not melt on the ground, but melt here before it hits the ground. Money's my problem. Mm -hmm. I've had those conversations. What's the serviceability attached to snow melt? Like, what do you guys have to do? Is there such a thing on annually? Like, do you guys have to maintain the system or? Just the same as any boiler. So yeah, right. same, okay. yeah, we check the glycol reservoir too. You just know, the glycol sure. mostly, yeah. the most yeah. important. Same thing as a boiler. Just a and we'll liquid. even we'll even check the viscosity level of the glycol yep. to make sure what it's capable of handling before its burst point. So if it's like if it's good for up to minus thirty two, you're losing me, man. I'm in science class right now. I don't understand what you're <laughs> talking about. What do you mean, like the viscosity and the, so the thickness of like your mixture between water and glycol. temperatures will yeah. change the consistency yeah. of it? Yeah. Right. So oh. over the years, it will start to break down. So, so are you we, supposed to drain it and then... No, no, we just, we take a sample and they'll say, okay, you know what? You, this, this, it's like your coolant in your car. Yeah. Uh, okay. So they'll say, okay, you know what? You're good for up to minus 45. Now, anything past that, it's going to freeze. Mm -hmm. So that's your burst point. So we check that because if we start seeing it, because we live in Canada, mm -hmm. if it's down to like a minus 10, minus 15... Think about it if that boiler fails and that glycol is sitting in that cold slab. In Canada, we have minus 20. So yeah. if that... You can't recover that glycol. Glycol then. is at minus 15 burst point and it freezes and those pipes crack. Now, there goes your snow melt system. The whole thing is done. Well, yeah, because yeah. then you're going to have a leak under the slab. you can't pump it out slab. of there, right? Yeah. It's going it's to expand in. And then you're going to have to yeah, rip up your driveway like, and oh, yeah. find the leak and yeah. fix it. Uh, that happens? It, ha Can? it happened to one of our clients, but that was uh, a plumber that had to do um, a new sewer pipe outside and hit the pipe. So we had to, I had to drain it, pressure test the system, it's and then almost. try to find. The and, and I noticed, the, the way I've noticed it was because I saw the earth, uh, the the... Surrounding the, the soil surrounding there. of the soil, and I'm like, it's wet. So I asked the homeowner, I go, did you have anything done in this area? And he's like, oh, yeah, I had my sewer backed up, had a plumber. We had to lift the stones, dig this area. I'm like, okay. He hit. They probably <laughs> hit one of the pipes. So after digging and removing the stones, we found where that one loop got hit. So I had to cut out a section, coupling, repair, repressurize to make sure there wasn't any other leaks. You had to drain the system first or no? Yes. You yeah, had to drain you had it. to drain it. Yeah. Because it's glycol, right? Yeah. So you drain it into a reservoir of some sort? And then yeah, we try to drain out as much as you can. Pets. It's not that easy. And then you pressurize with air and then you got to fill, purge the whole system, make sure there's no air locks in the system. Are all the appliances getting easier to work with or more challenging? I guess I'm, I'm trying to connect this to cars. Cars are becoming more difficult to service now. Oh, uh, like they're parking things inside the engine bay. You have to remove, like you said earlier, right. a thousand things to get to one component. 
Is that the same thing that's happening with the appliances that boilers and furnaces and whatever? It's kind of happening. Certain there? manufacturers yeah. have have done a better design into getting access to parts. So when yeah. you say better, so so for for so reengineered, okay, yeah. for serviceability, yeah, correct. That's why they so, they realize that someone needs to get back inside here at some point, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. here's the thing that I always said, you know, like you figured with new technology, equipment would be getting smaller. You assume. You assume. But you look at it as some manufacturers have come out with certain types of equipment that are trying to be more compact. Like yep. we'll use an example for the tanklesses, right? And you say, hey, Mr. Homeowner, look at this nice little box. You hang it and you're like, okay, great, let's do it. Then something fails and a service guy comes and opens that cover and goes, ouch, mm -hmm. I got to get to that part. But now I got to remove all, all this. this stuff. So then you get other manufacturers like, you know what? I'm not going to compact this into a small box. I'm going to make a little bit of a bigger box. But then the homeowner's like, oh, that takes up a lot of space. But then you say, okay, but the cost <clears throat> to repair anything in this is cut in half of what your other system was because you had to take half of it apart. But their logic is if it needs repair down the road. Yeah. We'll deal with that We'll then. deal with it then. But that makes no sense. You guys want to build a system no. like HVAC systems should last what two decades if they're maintained correctly. Forever, if anything. Forever. <laughs> you just we're <laughs> no, recording. You know that, right? Uh, thanks, yeah. things meant to fail. Things well, meant to fail, fail to after, fail after yeah. cycles. Yeah. All, all the appliances, all yeah. the mechanical yeah. things, right. they have life for cycle life, like for two thousand, three thousand, five thousand, or these many cycles. Everything starts go through a cycle. Yeah. But if it's at the end of its life, it's not like a water heater fails within six years. Does but it become less efficient with age? It's just inevitable it, that that's going to happen? Yeah, cause, cause it, the it depends what old. appliance yeah. you're talking so about. So like, right, right. I mean, right now it's like, what's the common for a forced air system? Is it like a two stage or something like that? Or a mid? Or two like stage two or stage. modulating yeah, stage. is yeah. the most common ones. So the idea is that, you know, that they marketability, they always talk about how it's 96% efficient. Like yep. Homeowners don't Under. really know what that means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like over the, t the life of its uh, serviceability, that doesn't stay 96% or whatever. It doesn't stay constantly efficient. Or does no. it? I don't know. If, no. if your furnace is maintained. maintained. If you mm -hmm. do maintenance, it can. Because when we do the fluid combustion analysis, we you. have the readings of, hey, what so is the CO? Okay. What is the CO2? Um, how the furnace is operating or boilers operating? Does the gas valve need to be adjusted? And so on and so forth. So if by doing those and being proactive, you can still maintain a good efficiency of the equipment. Unfortunately, the equipment today, from my experience in seeing, their generally lifespan is 15, 17 years. 15 years, eh? Yeah, it's like with anything, even a washer machine, I had one. It's even younger. Hit 10 Sometimes. years. Yeah, I know. And I called in for a part and they said, sorry, discontinued. What do I do with it? Guess I'm filling Get the landfill. Get a new one, yeah. Get a new one. <sighs> That's a so things are being made to break. Cheap. Yeah. And when they do break, a lot of times when you go in to price out certain parts, and you're like, what? A $2,000 yeah. motor for the fan? Yeah. And you're like, well, I'll, just I'll get put a, a couple one. more thousand dollars and I get a whole new furnace and I get 10 year warranty. So that's where I find I feel the industry is going towards. We're just filling the landfills. Nothing is built to last anymore. Which is unfortunate. It is. That's not being efficient. No. Now, other than your, you know, Merv, what is it, 9, 10, 11, 12? 12, 12, well, how 13. high does Merv go? I think 13 now. It Merv goes to 13? And how low is Merv? Where does it start? One? Yeah, that's George. What does Merv stand for? Mechanical. Oh, I'm putting you guys on the spot uh, here, oh. eh? Merv, I'm. Well, it's just like the, 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 the tightness. Of, it's it's yeah. The how, tightness yeah. Of, I think of it's the energy the, rating. Yeah. The higher the number, the, the tighter the the the, the woven yes. material, whatever is yeah. to prevent yeah. particles from coming in. Now everyone's going with a merv of some sort, like a four, or four and a half, five, and whatever it is, right? Yeah. But then there's also other versions of of filters. You get the electro static one, whatever is yeah. that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Like it's just electronic buzzing? ones. Like you're eating things or something like that. I don't know. Like what? <laughs> I don't know. What, like what, what else should you have in there? I don't know. There's Which you. UV light that's clean. The UV up. light, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the UV light do? Ultraviolet light kills the bacteria, comes in its contact, any virus. Bacteria. Where's the bacteria coming from to begin from with? From your house. From you your, breathe. well, 
you breathe, people come to your house, they bring all sort of thing, anything gets airborne, gets sucked into your vents. You have dogs, you have pets, cats, they have, we all have parasites on us, we all have viruses on us, some of us are immune to those viruses, you probably not. Mm. If I come to your house, I bring something, and if it go airborne, get sucked into that air. So they work, the UV and None works? of these filters filter that. Viruses, bacteria. But the UV does. UV, yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah, for killing the microorganisms. What other filters should you be considering homeowner-wise? Carbon filters? Carbon. What's the carbon HEPA, filter? HEPA filter HEPA. is one HEPA. pretty More good. for the odors. Yeah. HEPA, yeah. Gained, the uh, HEPA gained popularity during uh, COVID. For the odors, dude. Even I, like pay attention to William Sonoma and get a pot and put some cinnamon sticks in there and lemon yeah, and some rosemary and let that boil for a couple of hours and it's like that takes care of that that's cheaper than a filter no yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you get you your wife a $26 candle light that up no those <laughs> are completely like full of all kinds of chemicals yeah, and yeah, those things you candy, never yeah. never burn a scented candle candles bad for your HVAC system too eh scented candles or regular candles some, some candles I mm. use you know, just regular pure beeswax candles. That's all. Like some candles produce carbons. Some people burn a lot of candles around their house. Really? Yeah. But they're using scented candles. Man. Oh. Don't touch the scented candles. It's yeah. just pure chemicals inside that. Never in my life that I thought I'd talk about scented candles on a <laughs> I podcast. Eh? <laughs> Especially with HVAC. <laughs> Especially with HVAC. Yeah. Um, Here we George, got a deodorizer. What's a, ma- what's a magna clean? Magna clean? What is that? It uh, so on the boiler system because like magnetic thing or something like that. Yeah, it's a magnetic that captures the magnetite, which is within the black iron pipe. Oh, so, so is it like a coating that, on the inside? Right. So all that black sludge uh, buildup uh, had no issues on the cast iron boilers in the olden days, but these new ones are stainless steel. So you <laughs> want to protect. Oh. Your stainless steel boiler. We're talking about a re and re. Yes, you know, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So right? it's interesting. So, oh yeah, these boilers they hate. Uh, if you don't put, if you replace your, you have cast iron or anything that. So if you're keeping all your rads, you're keeping your original lines, yeah. and then you change the boiler, yeah. all of that. Maybe one or two years without Magna Clean, and yeah. then you'll be calling the company. Because it's just going to be clogged. Yeah, yeah. you'll do. You'll have a heat exchange failure, and a lot of times yeah. people don't realize. Uh, but if you do look in the manual, you're supposed to actually do a water sample yeah. first, yeah. and then you're supposed to condition your water. So yeah. whatever certain pH level needs to be at every boiler, you're supposed to put yep. additives. Holy cow! Really? Nobody yeah. does it because if if no. your boiler is done right, it's a closed loop system. Yeah. If your boiler done right. There's so no all it's leak. doing is picking up particles it's, yeah. and circulating particles, and it's just com- well, it's like arteries. It's like your body. Yeah, yeah. So and it's just getting because magnetite's like you know metal. Yeah. So it will attract and stick right onto the magnet. And then you to have to clean that out. Yeah. Once a year. Once a year, huh? Yep. And the one video I saw you doing it, yeah. it was like you were surprised how quickly that was at the end of the one year. No, that that surprise. Why that surprise happened? That's one we went for training. Remember we went for a training at uh, no, yeah, there was, there was which another vi- one that we went to. I, there I, was one that you opened it up and took it out, yeah, and, I, and yeah. I saw that's at the yeah. training. That's so there's the training. one that we did at the training, and then yeah. there's one that I also personally did at a customer's house, and I because I put the MC3 cleaner solution into it to clean okay. our whole uh, piping system within the house, and I went there um, probably almost a month. Because I know on the, on the bottle it says it's uh, not to have it longer than 26 or 28 days. Okay. Because then you got to flush that stuff out yeah, yeah. and then put the proper stuff in. So, yeah. Homeowners just don't realize that there's so much serviceability going on with all these mechanical components that contribute comfort to your right. home year and round. And the problem is because they're still stuck in the Stone Age. Yes. Yeah, with the old cast iron boilers, since we're on the topic of boilers, right? Those old cast iron boilers, back in the days, you had it replaced. It was basically, you leave it, you forgot about it. It were, did its thing. They were tanks. <laughs> they were bricks. It's a but shame now, because they were good machines. <laughs> but they were not a yeah, efficient they were as per the books. But unfortunately, yeah, yeah correct. They the were book. so inefficient. They're like 60% yeah. efficient. The other 40, you're heating Toronto. 
right? So now you got these nice stainless steel high efficiency boilers. But the problem is if the technician, the installer isn't educated or properly trained on how to preserve and maintain the efficiency of the boiler, yeah. you're going to kill that heat exchanger. Really fast. Because I know when I did the training... That sounds expensive. And they showed us at the factory, they had a heat exchanger, fire tube, heat exchanger, cut in half. And they're like, this is what a typical heat exchanger will look... I think it was about six or seven years old. Without maintenance, without proper... And what did it look like? It was... You, you could see the fire tubes inside. They were... Plug solid. Plug solid. And wow. where the water goes through the water tube. And then tube, the sorry. fire then... If there's no water, no heat dissipation from the fire, and it's going to cook the heat exchanger. Yeah, really the nice. channels inside were like plugging up. So it's an advantage that both you guys come from the mechanical automotive side of things, right? Yes. Huge yeah. advantage to get, to yeah. get into HVAC, right? Yeah. It's, it's education helps. A lot of people fail to understand education is the key for HVAC. Well, it's also re-education too. It's a constant, right? Yeah, constant. You can't you being can't up say, to date. Yeah. You ain't walking in and you're on your high horse and you know everything. You can't say that I six know months everything. you're gonna know yeah. something more. There's there's a PLC controls now in HVAC. Uh, I can I can pull my phone out and I can control a boiler from here, sitting here in Orangeville, because I have remote access of that boiler. Yeah, and you can read it now, right? I can. That's the new I can uh, call toys the that homeowner. are good about the. I like can call today. the homeowner. Hey, this is something wrong with your boiler. You need to get a service schedule. Yeah. And 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 as the controls are getting more advanced and advanced, in order to take care of the equipment, we have to educate ourselves. Yeah. You might know everything for equipment that made in two thousand, and now, you're like, oh, it's a carrier. I know everything about a carrier. And you open up that you. You open up the Bosch uh, heat pumps uh, cover. You're like, what is this? You don't even have to throw your gauges on now. It displays everything on that little... On the Bosch one, eh? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's about this, this, like, what? 12 by <laughs> crazy, 12, right? by 12 uh, <laughs> control panel. No, I know Bosch does a lot of cool things, man. And wait, for the, wait for the DeWalt version of it. There isn't going to be a DeWalt version of anything in that sector. Imagine the condenser fan motor no is DeWalt. Way. Imagine DeWalt being a DeWalt mm. stop making heat oh pumps. Oh, my goodness, man. It would probably be battery operated <laughs> yeah, okay. with a charger right next to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 20, Solar panel volts. charging the battery. <laughs> yeah. 40 volts. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna, Solar panel. You guys did a job where I saw it was a vaulted ceiling, and it was a whole linear. Who worked on that one? Like, it was linear heat supply line. Oh, it was that's, 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 six, that's that timber top. Six, like it was all these six inch line runs that are going down to feed it. I was like, yeah, what was yeah. all that HVAC design about? Man? Uh, that was massive. Yeah, you know? that was, that's a, was that's that? a new. It's the mono. new uh, linear mono. mono yeah, oh. the linear. This is new because all the commercial buildings <coughs> they have the linear style, the one inch yes. linear grilled. Yes, yeah. it looks slick. Now, yeah. forget about the look. Yeah, does it run slick? It's made to run. <laughs> That's not the question. Does air, it run slick? Air yes, comes it out. Does. Air it comes does. out. It does. It yeah. does. Because if it if it worked for commercial, yeah, it worked for residential. And I the the project you're talking about, we just commissioned it for the airflow. Okay, amazing. I was amazed how good the airflow. Oh, it was. works. Huh? Well, how, yeah. how, it, it works in commercial because commercial has the, right, the ceiling is yeah. like twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, twenty four inches high. Yes. You can build that linear properly. Not when it comes to residential because you're playing with 12 inches. Like, it's how are you going to... Not even sometimes. Yeah, sometimes not even sometimes. But if you're on the attic floor right? and you got the attic space, wouldn't you... Because I liked it. I was like, I kind of like that little... Yeah, if you're in the there. attic, that's no problem. But if you're playing... Depending like, on where the your roof, roof line yeah. is too, don't forget. True. Rafters. Plus, you also have to make that attic condition space now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can't stay... Or yeah. Because yeah. Right. Right. those those linears, they, they need a lot of room this way this way and to attach the runs sometimes we have to come up with stupid ideas yeah. just to attach that grill you get creative but are they not bringing that already into sort of modern contemporary homes like yeah. the whole linear on the flooring like you're feeding a Big trough time. right Big that's time. all coming now into mm -hmm. certain homes mm -hmm. it's not cheap no, but no it, it's not it no. just see, because it's usually the wall is all glass so even yeah. they're doing panel glass yeah. entryways exits to the backyard right yeah. then yeah. you have to i guess hvac design come up with that much airflow coming into yeah. that area right yes. you have to blanket yeah. it so but you're not feeding it from one end and just blowing air you no. got to no. feed it 
this, this, this. Yeah, there's, yes. there's it's multiple it's pipes going into balance, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, equal distribution on yeah. the whole glass. But I like the way that looks. It like, looks pretty it good. Looks, it looks better really than just one single It looks floor. pretty good. Yeah. I we completely agree. Yeah. But when you talk to the architect, you talk to the, the GC, hey, I need this. This much room. And they're like, oh, we can't drop the yeah. ceiling. We can't bake the bulkhead here. Homeowner's not going to like it. And then you're like, okay, you can't cut the joist to run the pipes. What are you yeah. going to do in so that situation? At that point, right? Yeah. You have Go to back to the homeowner and designer. A yeah. lot of things have to line up for linears to work, right? If the what's the minimum you need? Like two feet of space? No, you need more than that. No, right? I, you know what? Honestly, it's I think about, about eight to ten inches ten in inches height, height is yeah. great because we can hide our box inside. But you know, a lot of times the ceilings, the drywalls on the joist, and the way we're trying to run our linear is perpendicular. So, like, how do we, how do we hide the box? Yeah, have a continuous yeah, 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 grill yeah, yeah. going yeah. across, right? Um, it takes a lot of work to go from start to finish. The finished product looks amazing, but a ton of headache in between. Because yeah. the problem, when they frame the house, they don't care. No. <laughs> they, for them, they uh, architect... Well, build. they're not thinking about the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah but, about but say you are putting linears. You, now your framing has to align up for that linear instead of you say, let me frame it. And then we'll think about it. How are we going to put linears? But, but the problem is like that happening big time. The, the design aspect of it was it's never designed for HVAC purposes, which is the dumbest thing because it's, it's the designed most for the thing. final termination aesthetically. <coughs> yes, but it's not designing for the for, back end for comfort. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not designed the for HVAC the, the actual roughness of how things should be done. Yeah. So, so is there like a grill roars going on or something like that? Like, is that what's going on in the industry now? Everyone's trying to figure out the better looking grills or all kinds yeah, of crap. I've been much. seeing that. Yes. Yeah, uh, I feel like coming out with the wars. best grill war. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys going at it? Yeah. All kinds of grill wars going on. It's like, but I, I, but they're being fought by designers. And I rather than be fought by HVAC people. Things, th this is another point I always say. Comfort and looks. Yeah, functionality or over functionality. Where, where you want what well, the what part you want to, to compromise the look, but the look will not always add towards functionality. Yeah, exactly, good way exactly. that's yes. why I'm saying that it should the war should not be fought by designers; it should be fought by mechanical technician. Yeah, nobody here is a technician. We are nobody. They yeah, they no. they throw the drawings at us and like make it work. Oh, we can. They're like, huh? You get paid to do that. Do it. Sprinter, or What's Ford's called? Transit. Transit. <laughs> transit. <laughs> like, I had a brain fart there for a second. Sprinter or transit? Which one's better? You guys neither. Well, I've, I've neither? Had, neither. I've had both. So, and? I mean, space wise, Sprinter for sure. Has better space? Yeah. Space yeah. wise. What, in the if cab, like, in the back? Both? Yeah, both. And um, engine wise? Engine wise, but for sure, Mercedes. Sprinter. Sprinter's Life better? Yeah. Gas mileage wise? Tele get death problems. I would go with a transit. <laughs> Transit's better on gas? Yeah. Then now uh, they offer regular they, fuel and also reg diesel. Regular, I think. Sprinter's just all diesel. Diesel. Right? diesel. Yeah, diesel. We're diesel. And, and Sprinter's never, uh, Sprinter's four cylinder never took off here in Canada. They had a four cylinder. That'll be worst mistake if, it, they, it was if, in a good if they bring four cylinder diesel it into printers it didn't, it didn't last oh that oh. that will be it makes no sense right no mm. no, no 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 so four yeah. cylinders will be a okay so uh, so more sprinter. space in sprinter better on fuel efficiency and the engine no no the engine better on fuel efficiency with the ford yeah which one's prettier sprinter sprinter for sure. yeah. german, sprinter. Sprinter. german. We stick to the german engine. Yeah. it's mercedes <laughs> which one's more expensive <laughs> mercedes Oh, sprinter, sprinter for now sure. sprinter because yeah. i was deciding which one to get but um when i got both prices the price difference was <laughs> almost twenty thousand dollars seriously yeah well the, like keep in mind because it's because of this the call the covid yeah how, yeah, how yeah, all the that. prices went up right yeah. so okay. um we're getting close to the end here but i want to talk about i know that you guys do charity every yeah. it's every year right yeah so yes. how long you guys been doing that for <laughs> I think this, uh, we've done it for three three years now, I think. No, three four. Years. Four years. And it's for the, uh, what is it, the Youth Without Shelter yes. Charity? Yes. yes. And so the, so the whole Scott team, everybody team. gets together. Two, two events. 
two, two events. Do, oh, you do two events. Two events. First, we do the uh, donations for food. Yeah. And then we actually go there for the next time and cook for them. The whole yeah. team goes there. Yeah. 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 Run meal, prep, drive. cook. Yeah. Sure. You, you pulling out the tzatziki or what? <laughs> no. Somewhat. Somewhat? Yeah, yeah really? Yeah. Slovaki? Yeah. No? Walk no, in no. with a goat? <laughs> <laughs> Sheep. <laughs> No, it's great that you guys do that. I like that. We because do lamb on the spit, too. Oh, we get back. Right? <laughs> Spaduch. Uh, no, it kind of makes sense, right? It does, yeah. And you guys are helping out, and which is, and then all of a sudden you guys take a day off of ho- like work and play hooky for a bit, but you're helping out a bunch of people, right? No, we, it's a good thing we do. We do we, a team lunch after. It. Yeah. yeah. We go keeps, out. keeps you humble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly, right? It keeps you humble. It's to nice to give back to the community and help time. out. You know, Big what? time. Right? And this is something that came from Tyler or like from the team itself or how did it get started? You guys know? Yeah. Uh, Tyler and Tara started it. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and we did it the first year and we said, this is, this is great. Like we love doing this. It's, yeah. it's meaningful. Yeah. Right. And so we've done it ever since, right. Every year. You guys are getting like service calls from clients or something like that while you're there. Or you don't even pick up. No. <laughs> it's no, more important. That's, that's, yeah. So it's, like yeah. You just yeah. Book those days to... off. That's it. Done. Yeah. Right. Yep. Phones off the hook. Plus it also adds to your team. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like everyone mm-hmm. gets on board and it makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. So I just, I was like, I have a lot of respect for that, that he's pulling yeah. that off. It's good, right? I don't know what else to ask you guys. Huh? Uh, I already did that one. I did that one. So why do HVAC guys like Milwaukee so well? What's with the Milwaukee love? I don't understand. You know, they have it's a lot of... Is this red? This looks <coughs> better than green. Durability. No, they, they, they design a lot of tools. It's got nothing to do with visibility. It's got nothing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to do with visibility. We like the color red, yeah. yeah, yeah it's right. got nothing to do with yeah. that. It's because they, they have the most amount of tools that you need exactly. for the work that you need to yes. accomplish yes exactly. finish, finish. Correct. and then when they ca- got on the, the press train they got on it really well yes mm-hmm. that's it yes. so just it was a no-brainer and plus even i own packouts mm-hmm. yeah. like packouts i don't care about t-stack and sustainers and all this other crap like packouts are the best i don't give a shit what anybody says yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Great. Right? very great. durable yeah you got gaskets on them too Waterproof. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's why I laugh when I try to see like Dwalt trying to get into the game, and it makes no <laughs> sense. Good luck on that; it's not going to happen. So, <laughs> uh, sorry, not a Dwalt. Well, okay, so I want to go through one of each of you guys at one at a time, right? Um, this podcast is brought to you by Redmond Distributing, a proud family-owned and operated HVAC supplier, serving Ontario for the past twenty-two years, with warehouses conveniently located in both Mississauga and Ottawa. They specialize in providing premium HVAC and hearth equipment across the region. Redmond Distributing is committed to supporting HVAC businesses with their dedicated customer service, reliable warranties, free training sessions in their operational facility, inventory management, and free delivery to most locations in Southern Ontario. For a partnership with true HVAC equipment specialists, choose Redmond Distributing. Explore more at www.redmonddistributing.com. What's involved in a typical day that you guys like when you guys wake up and you get the call and you start your work day and to the end of the work day, what happens? Give me like the brief overview, the cliff notes. Who wants to start? Well, my, here, I'll start. You'll start with serviceability. Sure. Serviceability. Yeah. So Storage and serviceability. My day pretty much starts off, you know, I go through all my calls. Um, our service manager, if there's parts, we have like a parts counter in the shop. Um, grab my parts from there or I'll hit certain suppliers to pick up what I needed for that day. Filters, usually we have them in stock. Uh, And then just pretty much go on day to day to my call after call. And then sometimes we get thrown one of these emergency no heat or no cool calls. They come. Yep, they come. So, you know, we try to squeeze it in within the team. And then if our service area is busy. The great thing is we also have our installers where they're also knowledgeable to pick up, hey, George is busy, he's got, he's swamped. Okay, Jay or JR, one of you guys, I got a no heat, no cool call. They jump in, they go, assess it. Uh, and you know, we're always here for moral support. So if they get stuck in a certain area or they're not sure, they could always reach out to us and uh find out so yeah so basically you know that's pretty much how the day goes it's really un- unexpected because you always think okay yeah pretty smooth simple day today and then halfway through the day it's like bam you get hit something. with something comes up but you guys so. are problem solvers yep <clears throat> so you solve it exactly you can't figure it out you got a whole rolodex of 
mm-hmm. people that could possibly figure it yeah, out. Yeah, so we... That's that's the best part. Yeah, Everybody that's, can help that's the good thing about, like, yeah, with the Stott HVAC team. Yeah. We, we're here not only for um, the moral support and all that. I find we're like a big family, mm-hmm. you know? Adopted. Yes, adopted, adopted family. family. A big and I mean, family. Jake can Jake can vouch for me. You know, it could be Friday night. Ben can, uh, and we'll yeah. get on the group chat and yeah. we'll just start shooting shit, joking around. Yep, that's cool and stuff like that. And then Tyler's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna silence this one because <laughs> I keep hearing my phone ding, ding, yeah. ding, ding." <laughs> or Ian, our service manager, is like, "Yeah, I'm off this chat. You guys." You mean everybody uh, is on the same group chat? We have, yeah, yeah, we, we, have, we, have, we have a little community. Oh going. man, I'd be silenced all the time, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have our yeah, service no. department Some, sometimes chat. Sometimes it's fun. It's funny. Yeah, it's and fun. then we have our when thought general chat. And so we got on. multiple chats. Oh, I like that. Sometimes yeah. games That's on, smart. we have different supporters to different teams. Yeah. And yeah. 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 So it's great because I mean, even after hours, I, I I honestly feel like I'm like, damn, you know, these guys are my family. Yeah, we'll my crack second jokes family. at each other. It's great. We spend more yeah. time with each other than other. What's the day in life in you? Like, what do you? Yeah, so I'll I'll start my day with like three coffees. I'll talk to the team. <laughs> three coffees. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what kind of coffee we talking you, about. Tell, tell you one thing. Don't talk to this guy <laughs> until <laughs> the coffee. Until he has. I I go time. through the door and I go straight to the coffee machine. Uh, everybody else knows <laughs> to stay away from me until I have at least a cup. Um, you but know, coffee stuns your growth, eh? It's too late for me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little too late to get a little taller, you know. Three coffees, yeah. Black. Well, I'll take some cream and sugar with it. Yeah. yeah. Three coffees back. Yeah. I don't even know if I can do three espressos back. Yeah, to back. my hands uh, they shake. Okay, know? so you need the three coffees. I and need you're my three ready to rock and roll. Yes, I'll talk to the team in the morning. Um, you know, see what their day is like. If they need anything from me, any kind of support questions, I'll sift through my emails with the contractors. I'll go through my plans. Because we have numerous projects on the go. I, just, I have to keep an eye on the, on the back end. And, you know, if there's anything that gets missed or a different way to do something, I have to be there. Uh, you know, I'll do my site visits. You know, Jay, like, I come to your site a lot and <laughs> just see what's going on. And if it's not any of that, I'm on the whiteboard. Just figuring out. Figuring it out. Draw out a new plan for a boiler. Uh, wiring, controls. Can I get creative with something? Can I do with some other way that's a little bit better mm-hmm. you know it's uh something i just probably do. design like a start educational manual and <laughs> inserts you know like yeah. amendments you know, yeah, that's there, that's right? actually talking about that that's the beauty of social media yeah you some people a lot of people tell that hey this happened and i solved this mm. grasp that idea and mm-hmm. you bounce around with everybody mm-hmm. then you use it rather than yeah. just being cocky on the exact social media that's that's why I respect a lot of people who post not just random videos, but some educational tips. Of course. Mm-hmm. But yeah. there's too few of those doing that. Very few. And everybody's all Very about few. the gram. Yeah. yeah, it's all about like all that. What's yeah, it? nobody wants to show the... The truth. The F up sometimes. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. truth you know? to the youth. Yeah. What's the day in life in you? Yeah, gets to the shop early. Me and George, one of us uh, opens up the shop. And then uh, from the previous day, say I'm doing a job, I have a list, pick up everything. If I have a question, I'll pop it to Ben, like, hey, this is what's going on. What's, uh, what are we supposed to do here? Or what are your thought process, him, Tyler, or if <coughs> something has to do with the structure? Or Wheels are always turning, huh? Mm-hmm. Wheels are always right. turning. Once you pick everything, had to supplier, pick up stuff, uh, head to the site, and then... Bam, 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 all day. All day long, <laughs> and then wrap it up yeah, and do yeah. it all over again next day. Yeah. Exactly. Jer? Um, pretty Once much. Once you get off the streets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get off the streets and get into HVAC land? Yeah, my typical day, I usually wake up uh, to go to gym first before I hit the road. Okay. Um, but yeah, I have the same day as Jay because I do installs, right? So it's pretty much, you know, show up to the site and hope hope for the best that everything is ready for you to to rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have that split second moment when you show up on the job site, more, I guess, on the new sites than the existing rental sites, yeah. that you, as soon as you step in, you hope everything's prepared for you guys? Like everything's 
like you don't think about that like you don't that's that's we that's what i learned i'm the youngest here when i joined hvac uh start start doing the custom homes i expected that okay everything's i i the construction in. red carpet was rolled exactly. out and exactly. ready for you guys exactly. to do what you're going to do exactly prepare for the worst yeah so just assume that it's not going to be always sunshine it's and never rainbows gonna right yeah, for yeah. Sure. prepare for the worst things can go sideways even when you're working yeah. things go sideways for every the worst day. part is like the gc would call you it was like hey where are you we're ready you show up there and they're not ready yeah oh yeah that's, i think every i think every trade has that problem that's the gc's worst part, like right? two steps like, ahead of what there's really going on in reality yeah. right and now you schedule your days according to that and then it, and that's not up. efficient at yeah. that point right or they pressure you. Come on, come on. You got to get in. You yeah. get in. And then you're like, you're in there. And you're like, well, I'm ahead of you. You're slowing Path me down. Of yeah. least resistance. You can't pressure you guys. <laughs> Stott HVAC systems.ca. I want to do the 12 questions with you guys. At Stott underscore HVAC underscore systems. And then reach out to all of you. All you guys are your names at HVAC. Or sorry, Stott HVAC systems.ca. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Benny, George, J, J, J JR. Yeah. Okay. You guys ready for this? Because you guys have never done this. Uh-oh. What are we doing? Twelve let's questions of construction, man. You guys should watch the show, man. Okay, let's do thing. it. It's ready. Okay. One by one. We'll, we'll start with Benny. We'll go all the way around, right? <coughs> okay. Favorite construction word. <laughs> it's it's uh, a word. Yep. It starts with an F. Sure. It's fine. We can swear. It doesn't matter. You can swear in Greek if you want. All right. All right. What's, what's yours? Malaka. <laughs> no. What's your favorite construction word? Is it Malaka? Oh, um, never really thought of that. You don't have a favorite construction word, a word that pleases you when you get on the job site or something like that. <laughs> the Greeks are here. The Greeks are here. I don't know. Sparta. I don't know. <laughs> Sparta. Sparta. No, uh, truthfully, not really. Really? Yeah. Jay? I never thought of that. Look, I told you, F word. Yeah. Oh, the F word. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. JR? Uh, for me, um, good luck. Least favorite tool. I, I have one. Tool. Yeah, least favorite tool. Um, to be metaphorically. Hammer drill. Oh, that's what I was going to say, too. Oh, all of us hammer drill. Yeah. Yeah. Hammer drill. Hammer the drill. coring drill. SDS hammer drill, drill, drill or yeah. just hammer drill? The, the coring. Max. Oh, the big boy. Yeah, yeah. 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 the SDS, the big one. Are you guys going to get the harness now? Yeah. 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 Milwaukee yeah. has that, eh? Yeah, the, 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 the balancer. Endoskeleton. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, right? Healthy, healthy. Healthy has it. Yeah. Oh, that's it. So everybody's a hammer? Everybody? Yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah. As per our trade, it's be pounding a six-inch hole. Oh, say you oh, have to pound annoying. four or five, six-inch holes. I've done that. That drill's going to sing it. Yeah. And then you take it off a little bit. Yeah. What construction sound do you guys love? Ooh, that's a tough one. What construction sound do you guys love? It's the multi-tool sound. The drywall screw. Gun. The screw gun, and when, yeah. it, when it strips Oops. at the very end. Like zoom, 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 zoom. What's yours, Benny? Yeah, I don't even think I have one. Yeah, you, don't, don't you don't have, have a, a sound that you love off, in construction? Off the tools for a long time now. Oh, you know what? It's it's going to have to be the PEX gun. The PEX gun we do in floor. <laughs> yeah. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Yeah, our PEX gun shoots a wire out. The, and it's ties the it expander, the not, not the crimp. The expansion. Oh. Cold expansion? Oh, I'm, I'm, open I'm, open the, I'm talking the, about in-floor piping. Oh, the tie wrap. Oh, oh tie down. Yeah, the tie gun. Yeah. Okay, that gun. one. Yeah, yeah. No, the PEX gun. Oh, the other one. I like yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I like that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's even get better when you put your finger in it. Oh, me? Yeah. Um. bring a hot dog on site and try. You know my favorite construction sound? No. I mean, I would say like the sound of like the screw, I mean, drill. <laughs> Hammer action of the like, impact. Like impact. a self tapper or something like that? You guys are always Anything. like, you guys all own, I think you guys purposely use self tappers on everything. Doesn't matter if it's wood no, or whatever. We don't. No? no hard. On, on hard. Yeah, I've used tap cons on wood. Yeah. Yeah. Works great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a piece of wire. Yep. Uh, what's your favorite beverage? Yours got to be coffee. Yeah, it's coffee. No? Coffee for me. What's yours, George? Favorite beverage? Could be booze. Oh, could be anything. Ginger ale. Uh, no, well, you go. Coke. We, uh, it could be anything. We go with my <laughs> scotch and rye. Uh, Straight. What? What brand? Crown. Why did Crown do that whole flavor bullshit thing? I stay away from the flavor bullshit. What is that, man? No. What is that? Crown. Crown that's for well, white people. Those man, are for man. sissies. <laughs> those are for. That's sissies. one whiskey. If I drink, I get sick. What? Crown. Crown. Crown yeah. What is it that you don't get sick if you drink? 
a lot uh, every other whiskey. Two Warm three, milk. Crown and uh Crown and the Forty Creek. Oh shit. You don't like Forty Creek? No. I had that. Okay, so what's your favorite beverage then? Tea. Warm milk tea. Yeah. What, what tea though? <laughs> Indian tea. Chai okay. tea for Chai. Yeah, that's Chai. what I figure, right? Yeah. We ain't talking like PC green tea or some crap like that, right? <laughs> I, I, Might as well just be metal filings coming off of a furnace, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, What's yours, JR? Oh, coffee, easy. Coffee? Yep. Yeah. Uh, what uh, turns you on and off in construction? Sometimes it's the same thing. I like big uh, and neat mechanical rooms, especially with boiler piping. You know, we got our angles and we got our pumps and components. Wires are all straight and neatly, you know, put up. It's it's nice to see. It's I nice. love it. I yeah. love it. Listen, yeah. I like the accent lighting. I'm considering it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, just think, I think it's a little bit too much. But okay, so For what now. is it? What is the off now? That's the on. Cool. That's, I don't know. Off it, is the same thing. Yeah. Oh, you can speak for him. Yeah. <laughs> no space, right? No, no space. Nothing. Closet <laughs> builds are. Yeah. yeah, closet is a pain in the ass. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> George, what turns me on? Hmm. In construction. In, in construction. During finishing any stage, mud, a lot of mud these days, huh? Yeah, I, you know what? I, I'd probably say the automation system behind it that's what turns you on. Yeah, I like that stuff. The technology, yeah, the way it's put together, yep, and the controls, and, and even and even some of the homes you get into, and the setup, and the if it's in the mechanical room or if they have like a electrical room of some sort and they have it set up, I would probably say that. What turns you off? Homeowners. <laughs> <laughs> that one's come up, trust me, a lot yeah. of times. Jay? Yeah. Same, same thing. When you finish your uh, whole setup of the whole house, when it comes along and it's finished and you look at it, that's, that's, that's what gives you... Uh, that's and what then homeowners for the turning off? Turn off is uh, stupid GCs. They're out there. A lot of They them. should be labeled SGC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> SGC. Uh, JR? I would say the same thing. Like, uh, Come closer. Oh, sorry. Um, I was, <laughs> my bad. I would say the same thing, like, you know, um, especially like turning on the equipment for the first time, make sure yeah. they're all working. Like there's no... Make sure it turns on. Make sure it turns on and... Fuck, where's that screw? And then that's what it's supposed to do. That's, yeah. Yeah. And then turn off? Turn off is, yeah, pretty much the same thing as Jay. Just GCs that just don't get it. No, it's not about that. It's about you You pop a question to GC, and they go, they look at you like, yeah, I don't see why you can't do it. Go do it. Even though you know that's stupid, you yeah. can't do it. Yeah. Favorite curse word? <laughs> it's the same as my favorite construction word. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> George? <laughs> Fuck. Or Malacca's. No? Or Malacca. Malacca. Yeah. Uh, Jay? Yeah, it's in my own uh, mother tongue. It's the same. It translates to. Yeah, fun, well, I want to hear it. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> Come on! It's, I want. It's a pancho. 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 Yeah. I like that pancho. Pancho. Yeah. It's 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 like a big time helping word of Punjabi. If anybody listening, they will understand and they will. Pancho. Yeah, like you, you literally. That's expression. Like say fuck. You you like you see something. Uh, pancho. Pancho. <laughs> there. Uh, mine is. I speak in my. When I'm pissed and, you know, everything's not going Let's well. hear it. Yeah. Switch. It's yawa. Yawa? Yawa. yawa. And it means... Yawa! S- and it means That's the same thing? That's how I say it. Yawa? <laughs> yeah. And it means the same? <laughs> no, no. It's, it's H-back yawa is like direct trans- translation in my language. It's uh, like the devil. Oh, man, you're getting vicious, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's from the streets, you said, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Favorite vehicle? Any mode of transportation? <clears throat> Any, Any mode, mode of transportation, motorcycle that I can't get. Yeah, I, I what ride bikes. You can't too. have. We are married men. <laughs> he, he yeah. has more. I, I have a motorcycle. What do you have? Uh, ZXXR. <clears throat> yeah, It's a sports bike. No, I know exactly yeah, what yeah. bike it is, yeah. man. It's a little fast, little thing, man. Love it's it. Insane. Cruiser. Yeah, I love that. You get older, I, you go slower. I, I like <laughs> yeah. cruisers. A nice cruiser, Harley. Like a Harley? Oh, I love that. Eh, you got the right. pack outs with all the parts for it anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's all your, all your goodies. <laughs> that's, that's, that's I've been told cool. that regular bolts at Home Depot could be replaced and used on a Harley. No way. They fit. Wow. So I'll tell you a story. Somebody, when I was in trucking industry, 
he got motor rebuilt, like the whole engine rebuilt. Yeah. Typically, a motor rebuild costs you about fifty grand. This guy got it uh, for twenty five. And uh, how many orange bags? Yeah. <laughs> so he started in Brampton, made it to Woodstock. His motor started popping, all sort of noises. So he took it to somebody else who knows what he's doing. He started opening up the motor. He find out bolts bought from yeah. Home Depot. I know. <laughs> oh my God. I've heard of this, man. Seriously, I've no heard way. of this. Wow. What's yours, George? <laughs> I would probably say the Trans Am. What year? Eighty nine. That was my car. Kit? Really? Yeah. T roof still? Yep. Really? The GTA model. It looked like shit when they revamped it, eh? That one last year, the one yeah, last year. Yeah, the 91. Generation. Yeah, it was like, what is that? No. Like, all the ugly plastic. As soon as variants. 91 came with a. Like, what is all that? Nose? Crap? I was like, it's I'm almost done. like, you know, like get the guy who has cross eyes to design some new fairings and things like that <laughs> on this shit. Mine was the 89. Yeah, the last design that they should have kept it and just yeah, left the third it that gen. way. Third gen. Yours, Jay? If I can get to drive it. Um, Ducati Scrambler. Mm. You like the Scrambler? I like the Scrambler. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. That is like one of the uh, most ugliest like Ducatis ever built in the history of Ducati. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a Ducati guy. I don't. I have a '99 Monster. I'm not into. Oh. I'm not into the um, the sport bike look. You like cruisers? cruisers. I like the cruiser cruisers. Cruisers. Yeah. Finale, man. Like um, I mean, or, or, or a, a Triumph too. A Triumph. Oh, nice. a Triumph. My Monster is yeah. still carbureted, man. Really. Yeah, that's how old it is. I'm old, man. I'm 52. But Scrambler? Mm, Scrambler is like a piece of shit. It's ugly, man. I'm sorry. It's an ugly <laughs> sorry, Jay. Bike, man. It's an ugly looking bike. I'm sorry. What do, you, what do you guys miss? That's just my opinion. What do you guys miss from your childhood? Stress. No yeah. stress. stress. No kidding. Uh, freedom. Stress free. Stress freedom. Yeah, it's just the freedom. That's yeah. the freedom. Freedom. Answer. That's what's yeah. coming up. Freedom. Yeah. No, no stress. No responsibilities. No worries. No responsibilities. What yeah. profession other than your own would you guys like to attempt one day? Army. Army? Soldier. Soldier. It's my dream. You're in Canada or back home or Does, someplace doesn't, else? I, I got rejected from Indian Army because I had an accident. I lost half of my eye. Okay. So I, I went for all three, Air Force, uh, Army, and uh, Navy. But you need depth. And I got rejected from all of them because uh, physically not fit. Yeah. And if I, if I would have no problem with my eyes, I would have never been here. I would have been commissioned back in India in the Army. Wow. I, I love to wear a uniform. Okay. You wear a different uniform now. No, but the one you earn. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Benny? I'd actually love to help out animals, if anything. Very different. Very, very different. Farm animals or shell dogs? <coughs> cats. Wild animals. Wild, animals really? Animals in need. Raise yeah. some goats. Yeah, yeah, even stuff in the, in, the, in the forest, you know, something I can uh, do. Animals are better than humans these days. <laughs> much, yeah. Yeah. So, George? No, mine would be uh, automotive. Automotive, eh? Yeah. Build stock cars and stuff like mm. that. It's always my passion. Cool stuff. The old engines, eh? Yep. I'm I'm on the fence about a lot of the older bodies being retrofitted with all new technology with the new engines and everything and gutting them into the old bodies. Like Rogan was talking about he had a Camaro sixty nine and it's mm -hmm. fully decked out with all new tech inside, but the shell is fully still fully aspirated. That doesn't and all give that. you the I am on the fence about that. Yeah. Because I want the I like the old school I want the I carbureted. <sighs> That's how I am too. I want that rumbling. I want like that the like barracudas. I'm this close to death. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, that's just me. But yeah. okay. Oh, for me, policing. A cop. Yeah. Well, that was my like HVAC was the the back was, fallback. Was my, yeah, fallback. That's why I took HVAC as a plan B. And um, yeah. Uh, what do you guys not want to do? HVAC. <laughs> HVAC. No. <laughs> no. You're supposed to say something like plumber, like servant. Service. Service? Restaurant. Oh, hospitality. Uh, yeah. Never want to be there. I never got into it. Never I want to. That's What's yours, question. Benny? Yeah. You guys? It's, uh, you know what? I, that's about the same as Jay, too. I wouldn't do anything in restaurants. and Yeah. Yeah, I'm with yeah, you on that one. Can't deal. do it. The no. hospitality <laughs> restaurant, hotel, that type yeah. of work. Yeah. Smack people. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> National slap stupid day. That's yeah. what we need. <laughs> National hey? slap stupid yeah. day. That's what Jared, we need. What's yours? <laughs> um, I don't know. To be honest, there's nothing like there's no job that you don't want to. You want to oh. clean up toilets? Cop. Masonry. 
Masonry yeah. is a hard one. That's a touchy That's, subject. Yeah. When no, it's not. It's say it to no, 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 no. I don't even do it. Last <laughs> question. If heaven exists, what would you guys like to hear God say when you arrive at those pearly gates? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> 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 Whoops. Some people. It ain't way. much better up here, son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. I took the wrong door. Yeah. Uh, um, what did I do wrong? <laughs> guys, thanks so much, man. It's good to see everybody again. Yeah, nice to meet you, Jay. Yeah. Finally, part of the team. Right. I, I respect what you guys are up to and what Tyler's been building and the whole team and everybody like that. So it's yeah. anybody. And you guys are always looking for hires, no? Or he's always interested in Yeah, just hand people. in your resume, man, and you'll be yeah. good to go, yeah, buddy. We'll consider it. I'm not yeah. caring. I'm not installing hot water tanks. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing for one. I'm not doing it. Reach out to them. at Star We're looking Tech. for a sheet metal guy. I'm not. That cut skin, man. Like, you guys have those fancy gloves. I'm not cutting. That's we supply the, gloves. That's the worst, eh? Like a sheet metal cut. That's the worst, man. Yeah. Especially when it's deep yeah. and it doesn't bleed right away and you look at it and you almost mentally make it bleed. Well, metal slivers that. are worse because you can't uh, even see it. It's just poking you all day. I can't yeah. stand that, yeah. man. Uh, Stott HVAC Systems.ca at Stott underscore HVAC underscore systems and then also reach out at uh, all you guys, your names at Stott HVAC Systems.ca. That's it, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you very awesome. much. Awesome. Pleasure having you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Yeah.